हेलो स्टूडेंट्स स्टूडेंट्स So students, today's session students just subscribe to the channel. Uh, those the comment part of it. Many students are wanting to comment for it, so just ensure to. Subscribe to the channel first. I think uh, friends, uh, this is a new channel in which we are now will be doing further all our revision lectures. So we already have uh, the four lectures i've done the four class of the chart revision this is the fifth session many students will be asking sir what about the link of the four lectures so the link of the four lecture students i'm going to put it in the description box of this particular video uh, after this lecture gets over so what we have done so far students i'll let you know in the four class up till now students we have covered the entire pgbp profit link deduction thereafter we have uh, all entire pgbp house property tax rates profit link deductions then the non resident taxation is what we have covered up till now now students this particular side students we are first going to start with transfer pricing today so transfer pricing students i'm going to start off with it and the target would be to complete this transfer pricing now and uh, we will be doing a very comprehensive analysis of the transfer pricing provision which are being there in this context so students and again i'm repeating students just you need to subscribe the channel only then thereafter you would be in a position to comment it in this context so just keep that particular point in mind now then <coughs> students let's start with the transfer pricing provision at first We'll start with the TP provision, students. Transfer pricing provision. Now, every attempt, we all are aware that the transfer pricing provision. Sunny, hello. Every attempt, students, we all are aware that the transfer pricing provision do comes for approximately around ten marks. Now, with the thirty marks take of your examination. Yes, sir, Sunny. There is a five minutes wait time. so students uh, those who have subscribed for the channel there is a 5 minutes wait time and then thereafter you will be in a position to make a comment on the same fine friends now let's start with our discussion which has been there in this context on the tp provision all set students sunny now in this regard students in this particular regard students 10 marks this time mamta good evening 10 marks question students this time i strongly feel two or three areas should be there in your examination two or three areas should be there in your examination many students are asking sir which areas one is definitely the method of determination of the transfer price method of determination of transfer price students i consider this to be one of the most likely and expected area of your syllabus question so if you all can see this particular part carefully now there is an introduction then there is an applicability international transaction specified domestic transaction then the point number 6 is the methods of determining the alp the methods of determining the alp so that is another particular part which has been there there after from the secondary adjustment there after you can see the secondary adjustment 92c ap modified return again one of the most important area for your upcoming examination documentation report cbcr master file local file absolutely the critical areas that you can see 
so far as your paper is concerned a suspend drp route time limits penalties and the thin capitalization and the practical problems there on students in this revision session i will also take you through to some of the important practical questions this time students i have seen that in your icm module in the icm module students i have seen this that they have introduced some couple of new set of questions new set of questions so even those set of question i have covered up in this particular chart even those particular question students i have covered up in this particular chart now students accordingly we will go one by one in this context the section 92 is a game this is the one of the most important provision section 92 and that is about the applicability of the transfer pricing provision students the applicability of the transfer pricing provision now what it has to say let's have a look section 921 what they are saying income allowance for expenses or interest from an international transaction from an international transaction students this if it satisfied then in that case the transfer pricing provision would be applicable similarly similarly in 922 922 students talks about the cases of the cases of if you can see the cases of the allocation and the apportionment of the expenditure like for example any kind of a common overheads so there is a case of a allocation or the apportionment of the expenditure so that how the associated enterprise between themselves will be allocating or apportioning the common expenditure or the cost even that would be determined on the basis of on the basis of the arms length price even that would be determined on the basis of the arms length price did you all got this one mamta sani even that would be considered on the basis of the the arms length price the third one students is about what the specified domestic transaction at a very unique part this we will discuss it towards the end sdt the specified domestic transaction so students the first one 921 applicability of transfer pricing provision any income expenditure or allowance which is arising from arising from an international transaction then in that particular case the transfer pricing provision will apply in which case we need to determine the alp and then check whether the transfer price which is charged in that international transaction whether the transfer price which is charged in the international transaction whether that transfer price is it having regard to the arms length price having regard to the arms length price or not that is point number 1 <clears throat> as i told you point number 2 is about section 92 sub section 2 in which particular case any common cost which are there those common cost primarily or the common overheads if they are being allocated or apportioned between the two or more aes between the two or more associated enterprise then even that particular allocation or apportionment should be made having regard to the arms length principles arms length principles and finally students this specified domestic transaction in which case also the transfer pricing provision will be applicable now before we can proceed students always keep in mind one trick which i will tell you students as i as you all are aware that i'll tell you a trick a bit later i'll just tell you students one thing very categorically all of you pay attention on this case students in this particular context students <coughs> the entire focus is on this particular term international transaction on international transaction the entire emphasis is on this term which is the international transaction now i will try to divide this term into two parts one is international and another is transaction one is international and another is transaction now how are particular in this context what is transaction students the transaction can be of anything students like for example the transaction could be of the supply of goods and services the transaction could be of supply of the goods or services or the properties or the case of the properties or for that matter intangible asset or for that matter intangible asset or in that scenario students in that particular context even the lending and borrowing is covered even the lending and borrowing students can be considered to be a transaction or may i say in a very simple word students here in in this case this is the most important part 
और मे आई से एनी ट्रांजेक्शन स्टूडेंट एनी ट्रांजेक्शन विच हैज विच हैज एन इम्पैक्ट स्टूडेंट बी केयरफुल विच हैज एन इम्पैक्ट आइदर डायरेक्टली और इनडायरेक्टली आइदर डायरेक्टली और इनडायरेक्टली ऑन द प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट ऑन द प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट ऑफ द इंडियन ए प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट ऑफ द इंडियन ए स्टूडेंट दिस इज अ गेम दिस इज मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पर्टिकुलर रेफरेंस supply of goods and services transaction will imply the supply of goods and services or for that matter the supply of the property or in transaction relating to the intangible asset or lending and borrowing or any transaction which has an impact either directly or indirectly on the profit and loss account of the indian a now on the, on the examination day students always keep in mind whenever they give you the question the first thing that you should do is is that prepare a pro forma pnl account just a rough pnl and check that transaction is giving the impact to the indian associated enterprise pnl either on the debit side or on the credit side what where the impact of that transaction is being felt in the profit and loss account of the indian a whether that particular impact on the profit and loss account of the indian a is it coming in the profit and loss account debit side or it is coming on the profit and loss account credit side always have the habit to always do this particular thing got this one students so this is precisely what you will take that into consideration so any transaction which has an impact either directly or indirectly on the profit and loss account of the indian a now how a particular transaction can be considered to be international transaction so this is how a transaction will become international that is at least at least one of the one of the associated enterprise has to be has to be what has to be a non resident so one of that particular associated enterprise students has to be a non resident and only then we can say that yes this particular transaction is an international transaction so students let me give you a one a very typical example which the ici in one of their rtp has covered in one of the rtp of the ici this question was being covered that there was a case of the purchase of the asset by the indian a which was a subsidiary company from the from the holding company which was us based so there was a us based holding company they were transferring their asset to the indian a that is the subsidiary company in india now this was at a price of rupees 10 crores the price of the asset was rupees 10 crores second was this this was a plant and machinery now in that context with the price of rupees 10 crores the next question that was in this case was that the arms length price of this particular asset the arms length price of this particular asset was rupees 8 crores amruta the arms length price of this particular asset was rupees 8 crores so therefore the question that came up was this the question that came up students was this that with the 10 crores of the transfer price and with the 8 crores of the arms length price the difference is 2 crores but please understand the impact of this transaction is going directly in the balance sheet the impact of this transaction students is going directly in the balance sheet all of you will agree to this one isn't it but can i therefore say indirectly it has an impact on the profit and loss account can i say either directly or indirectly both the words are being used students both the word are being used either directly or indirectly so therefore in this particular case the impact of this transaction is indirectly felt is indirectly felt in that particular balance sheet item so in the profit and loss account and how it is coming to have an impact in the profit and loss account it is coming to have an impact in the profit and loss account by virtue of students by virtue of the depreciation allowance depreciation allowance shelly good evening so by virtue of the depreciation allowance the impact has been felt and that exactly is the point this is what you should always keep in mind students by virtue of the depreciation allowance it will have an impact so by over invoicing the supply of the asset 
the SSC, the Indian SSC is trying to avail a higher amount of depreciation. So don't you think that in this case also the, the valuation of the transaction shall be determined on the basis of the arm's length price? The valuation of this transaction shall be determined on the basis of the arm's length price? And the answer is yes. So this is one of the example, Mamta. Yes, this is one of the example which I have given all, to all of you about directly or indirectly. Just keep this particular point in mind. With that, now let's move forward. With that, now let's move forward. So what is required for the applicability of the transfer pricing provision that there has to be a international transaction. Now, the transaction students, all we are aware that there has to be a presence of the associated enterprise. Now, is the associated enterprise has been defined? Yes, they have been defined. Where it is defined? 92A. So, this is 92A where the definition is. By the way, the international transaction definition is in 92B. This definition is in 92B. So, A is in 92A. Now, many students ask all very frequently, sir, associated enterprise definition, are we supposed to buy heart? You don't have to buy heart it, students. I strongly feel that the associated enterprise definition is more to do with your presentation part. Because I see what they do, like if you see in the last June attempt, December attempt also, ICI has got a, a habit of giving you a one particular paragraph or one or two couple of sentence, you can say that way to be very precise. Couple of sentence would be dedicated only in respect of the couple of sentence in this question students will be dedicated only in respect of, in respect of what? The relationship between the two parties. And they are expecting you, in fact, while they will allocate you the marks, they will expect you to make a reference of 92A and how they are to be considered as an associated enterprise as per 92A. So you need to identify the relationship that exists between the two entities in the question. How they could be considered as an associated enterprise under section 92A, that needs to be clearly put up in your answers. In fact, that should be your first point so far as your answer is concerned. Please do that because that is for one mark. If you don't, in fact, if you assume there is an A without putting it specifically that because of this relationship between the two entities, they have become an A. So if you don't put this particular part clearly, then students' marks will be deducted. Clear to all of you students? Now what I have done students is that I have made this particular that capital based relationship between the two entities or for that matter the control based relationship between the two entities thereafter the management based relationship so you can see I have made this compartment so that it becomes very easier for all of you to really comprehend now just keep in mind students 26 percent or more of the voting power voting power so therefore with 26 percent or more of the voting power the 26% or more of the voting power, both of them could be considered to be an associated enterprise. With 26% or more of the voting power, both of the enterprise could be considered to be an associated enterprise. Okay. At the same time, students, supposingly, there are two entities, B and C, which has a common parent A. That common parent A is holding in B and C at least 26% or above voting power. If common parent A is holding in B and C at least 26% or above voting power in these two entities, then in that particular case, B and C also shall be considered to be an associated enterprise. A and B, any case, are associated enterprise. A and C is also an associated enterprise. Why is it so? Because A holds in B 26% or above voting power. A also holds in C 26% or about voting power but the fact that both b and c have have got this common parent a in which uh, have has got common parent a which holds in both of them at least 26 percent or above voting power this therefore makes both b and c to be a to be an associated enterprise to be an associated enterprise i hope that all of you are clear with this particular part so even this is there now be careful substantial lender from this was targeted in the last attempt are you aware of that in the last attempt this was targeted loans which are being advanced by an enterprise 
so if one entity is giving a loan primarily and that loan constitute minimum 51% of the book value of the asset of the borrower the one who is borrowing the loan that poor amount of loan constitute minimum 51% of the total book value of the assets of the borrower in that particular case both the borrower and the lender will become an associated enterprise similar to this is the guarantor for borrowing just if you see link it up with the guarantor for borrowing so in that case students if an enterprise in this case is guaranteeing minimum 10% of the total borrowing so if i have taken a 1000 crores of loan and there is mr a which has guaranteed 150 crores of my borrowing to the bank so he is a guarantor of 150 crores so out of my total borrowing of 1000 crores 150 crores is guaranteed by a so in that particular case mr a and i both of them will be an associated enterprise mr a and i both of them would be an associated enterprise is that clear to all of you thereafter supply dependency meaning thereby 90 percent or above value of the raw material 90 percent or above value of the raw material i am dependent upon a particular entity so my raw material total raw material 90 percent of that total value i am procuring from a particular entity this is making both of us this is make, making both of us as an associated enterprise students in a very simple word this and this is in last may may 2019 attempt students may 2019 attempt this was being asked so if one of the enterprise say reliance industries has the power to say for example they have the power in relation to other enterprise what is the nature of power they can appoint more than half students this is a game i see a question students you should salute it they have told that they have got 50 percent students they have got 50 percent they can appoint 50 percent of the board members in the other entity 50 percent of board members in the other entity so if it is a 50 percent of the board members in the other entity students in that case will this too can it be considered as, as an associate enterprise if it is exactly 50 percent answer is no it has to be more than 50 percent this is such an important particular point students in the examination this was May 19 attempt question very unfortunate ICI should have avoided this type of memorizing kind of a thing but they have asked so I thought just to bringing to your notice because it's like a revisionary class so it's better that last revision at least you should know about these things so the question of May 19 was that four part the, the company had four directors of which two directors can be appointed by reliance for example so whether out of four if two directors can be appointed by reliance will that make reliance and this particular entity an associate enterprise answer is no it has to be more than two meaning thereby more than 50 percent fine students this is what is your associated enterprise definition this is what is your associated enterprise definition now international transaction students 92b 92b i have already done, done it 92b i have already done it i will do with you deemed international transaction students deemed international transaction now students this ici have targeted an mcq this revision lecture students i am also doing your mcqs and all but in a very subtle way mcq i'm going to explain in my lectures so one of the ici mcq i have found out they have targeted 92b now 92b there is a case of a deemed international transaction many of you will say sir what do you mean by deemed international transaction see understand one thing if a limited and b limited i'll now go with the simple examples a limited is a holding company of b limited so obviously the fact that 26 percent or more of the voting power of a limited of b limited is held by a limited automatically students both of them are associate enterprise everyone can agree to this one perfect here the main point students is this please pay attention to this one here the main point students is this the main point students in this regard is this that where is that pen the main point students in this regard is this a limited 
knowing that B Limited is the social enterprise, so therefore in this case this is a holding and maybe this is a subsidiary company. So therefore, what they are doing is, is that instead of A Limited directly doing a transaction with B Limited, it has introduced in between an unrelated person. It has introduced in between unrelated person. Okay, so now the transaction goes something like this. With the unrelated person being introduced in this particular transaction, with the unrelated person being introduced this, in this transaction. So what is happening students? A limited is now supplying the goods to him at say 1000 rupees. And thereafter, he is supplying the goods to him at say 1050. Nominal value they are supplying it. So therefore, A limited says 50 rupees you keep it as commission in between. Whereas, whereas students, if you see here, the arm's length price, the arm's length price is say around uh, 2000. Now, A limited can argue clearly, A limited can argue clearly students, what they can argue that the transfer pricing provision is not applicable because I am transacting with an unrelated party, isn't it? So therefore, how this transaction can be subject to the transfer pricing provision? 92b gives you gives you the answer how this transaction can be subject to the transfer pricing provision 92b gives you an answer so students what we need to do in 92b we need to identify in their question in that mcq which i am talking about it they have given you that there was a prior agreement this is a word that you have to pick up in the question students in that particular mcq they have said that there is a prior agreement and that is what you need to pick it up. So therefore students, just see, was there a prior agreement between A limited and this unrelated party as per which they have agreed that I will give you the goods at 1000 and thereafter you pass on this goods to my AE at 1050. The difference you keep this as commission. If there was a prior agreement between the two parties, then in that particular case, this will be considered as a deemed international transaction. And if it is a deemed international transaction, students, can we say therefore that the transfer pricing provision will it be applicable? Answer is yes. Please keep in mind, students, this what I have discussed just now was targeted in the MCQ. I am doing with you MCQ also in this particular way so that all the important MCQs are also getting covered in our discussion. Now, students, I will be doing the methods of the now let's go to the methods how to determine the arm's length price by virtue of various methods but before i go to the various methods i am just in a search of something i am searching something students can you identify what exactly is the search all about uh students are you aware of one concept of okay let me do that after the method students let me do it after the method First students, let's start with the methods. SDT, <laughs> okay, Abruta. Yes, indeed, STD. So we'll do the specified domestic transaction students towards the end. This SDT part, let's do it students towards the end, okay? Any case, it's an independent thing and I think all of you also will not be uh, very desperate about SDT. I think many of you are uh, interested for the method. For May 22 attempt students, congratulations. I am telling you the paper. I am telling you right now the ABC analysis and the my, my this time method would be the sure shot question students for May 22. Congratulations students. You already know what is going to be there. Worst to worst, if the time you are running out of time on that D day of the examination and the transfer pricing topic is what is pending, what I will tell you on the day of the examination, do transfer pricing towards the end. Do transfer pricing towards the end. Many students are asking, sir, what is the situation? Why is you are saying to do it towards the end? There is a reason for it. <coughs> there is a reason for that. <coughs> there is a reason for that, students. The transfer pricing provision, students, the, there is a reason for that, students. The transfer pricing provision, students, which has been there. The method last time.
Last time they haven't targeted anything in the examination and I am considering the transfer planning provision to be one of the most important provision for your upcoming examination. Most important students. So let's look upon to this TP provision then. Uh, the methods of this particular part. The methods of determination of the transfer planning provision. Five methods are there students. Cup method. Cup method. Thereafter the resale price method. Thereafter the transaction at margin method. Isn't it? And thereafter the cost plus method. And the final is the profit split method. Finally is the profit split method students. Study. There are first one is students the profit split method. So let's try to decode each one of them. Comparable uncontrolled price method students. You in fact ICI has got some new question on resale price method and the cost plus method. Although cost plus method was not that new but resale price method which I have seen and we have kept the question also students towards the end. I will share you the questions also which this one the question is there. So there is some questions which are being given to us and we have to follow those questions very carefully. This is the question. I will solve the questions with all of you students in this revision class. So let's start. Let's start to do this one. First, cup method. Cup method students. <coughs> in the case of the cup method students, as you can see, what needs to be done? The questions would be very much fairly simple. Straight away, there would be a comparable uncontrolled. There would be a comparable price. There would be a price of an uncontrolled transaction that will be given to you. So you, there will be two transactions that they will give it to you. One would be, one would be your international transaction. Students, couple of things, students. In your in the examination, please write properly. The ICI gives the marks for. In the transfer pricing chapter, I should tell you, many students would have felt in the earlier attempt that sir, transfer pricing question is for 8 to 9 marks, but we could solve this question hardly in half page. That is also a possibility. But ultimately, it depends upon what you have written over there. Like for example, students. Yes, Pumpt. Like for in this particular contest, students, the word international transaction is the key. International transaction means you will write in the examination international transaction international transaction now what is international transaction whenever you are referring to the transaction between the associated enterprise you will refer this to be an international transaction point number one point number two the price which has been charged in that international transaction the price which has been charged in that particular international transaction shall be referred as shall be referred as what students exactly it shall be referred as the transfer price the price will be referred to be a transfer price keep these two points in mind okay so students having gone through the international transaction having gone through the transfer price which is charged in that international transaction in the cup method in the cup method they will give you students what they will give you the data relating to the uncontrolled transaction the uncontrolled transaction. What is what is uncontrolled transaction? The transaction between the non-associated non enterprise. The transaction between the non-associated enterprise. Is that clear to all of you? Now, between the international transaction and the comparable transaction students, between the international transaction and the comparable transaction students, you will find that there are some uncommon factors. You will find that there are some uncommon factors. What you need to do now, students, is this that you will have to make an adjustment. Students, you will have to make an adjustment in respect of these uncommon factors. You will have to make an adjustment in respect of these uncommon factors. Many students are saying, sir, how do we make the adjustment? So adjustment would be like, please be very careful. The price which is charged, please be careful. The price which is charged in the comparable transaction, the price which has been charged in the comparable uncontrolled transaction, that particular price needs to be aligned. That particular price, students, needs to be aligned with the factors which are available or not available in the international transaction. Always keep this point in mind. Sunny, Amruta, 
always keep this particular mind in mind that whatever is the price which has been charged in the comparable uncontrolled transaction that price needs to be adjusted to align with the factors to repeat with me to align with the factors which are there or not there in the international transaction and that adjustment will finally will result into the arm's length price as per the comparable uncontrolled price method as per the comparable uncontrolled price method i hope that all of you are clear with this one so very quick example students let's take a very quick example on this one and the examples are in the case of the international transaction the price that has been charged is on the basis of the fob or may i say cif the price which is charged in the international transaction is on cif basis whereas in the case of comparable uncontrolled transaction the price which has been charged is on fob basis what did i told you students what did i told you you will have to ensure that the comparable transaction price needs to get aligned with the factors which are there or not there in the a in the international transaction so from the comparable price whatever it is which is at fob i need to bring it to cif so what i need to do in that fob price i will do the add of insurance and freight in that particular fob price i am going to do add of insurance and freight i hope that all of you are clear with this one the second particular point students which is there the second particular point students in this particular context lay one more example supposingly supposingly students the supposingly students in the case of the international transaction the price which has been charged is at the price which has been charged is at x warranty the price charge is x warranty whereas in the case of in the case of the comparable uncontrolled transaction it is at come warranty price so what i need to do i need to then the comparable uncontrolled price i need to adjust it to bring to the same factor as it is there or not there in the international transaction so i need to bring the price of the comparable uncontrolled transaction to x warranty and if i have to bring it to x warranty i will reduce the warranty charges i shall then reduce the warranty charges did you all got this one so i'll reduce the warranty charges from this particular amount from this particular value clear to this one friends all of you so therefore i will reduce it that warranty factor and by reducing the warranty factor students i will get to the to the uh, alp of the transaction once i get the alp please compare that alp with the transfer price and be careful once you see the difference don't get excited and please don't blindly add that this difference between the alp and the transfer price is the additions to be made in the total income don't do that please check whether whether that is it a case of that the alp and the transfer price if you adopt the alp will it result into a downward adjustment are you aware of section 923 students all of you are aware of 923 923 says that if the alp if if the alp adopted result into a decrease in the total income or the increase in the decrease in the total income or the increase in the in the what students in the losses then in that particular case you need to drop off your arm's length price so what did i told you students originally please make your indian ae's profit and loss account the international transaction which is given to you in the question please ensure to make the indian ae's profit and loss account and see where the impact is felt whether it is a purchase or whether it is a sale say for example it is a purchase and the transfer price is 100 so it is a pnl debit for the indian ae and the alp that you have computed alp that you have computed is 80 if the alp that you have computed is 80 then yeah it makes sense will you do the adjustment friends will you do the adjustment because on adoption of the alp in this particular case will you do the adjustment what is your take students 
on adoption of the ALP in this particular case, will you be doing the adjustment or not? Amruta, Sunny, will you be doing the adjustment? To that, the answer has to be yes, students. Sunny, answer has to be yes because my international transaction was at 100. Okay, whereas the purchase which I have done, the purchase which I have done, students, uh, international transaction was at 100 whereas the ALP which I have computed is 80 so it means that you have deliberately done an over invoicing this is a case of an over invoicing and because this is a case of an over invoicing so therefore if I adopt the purchase at ALP at 80 if I adopt the purchase at ALP at 80 will it result into the addition in my total income answer is yes why not it will result into the addition in my total income. I hope that every one of you are clear with this one. So this 20, will it be added? This 20, will it be added? And the answer is yes, it will be added. But just imagine the same transaction. Indian A profit and loss account. Indian A profit and loss account. Students, you are preparing the Indian A profit and loss account. And in the Indian A profit and loss account, this particular transaction in the Indian A profit and loss account, Indian A profit and loss account students, this transaction is coming in the sales. This is falling in the sales. Sales is at 100. Okay, instead of purchase, now let me reverse this position to sales and the, therefore this is my transfer price. The ALP that is determined is at 80. Now, whether you are going to adopt this particular ALP in this particular case, will you adopt ALP? Answer is no, you will not adopt ALP because this will result into a downward adjustment under section 92.3. This will result into a downward adjustment samarth under section 92.3. Are you clear with this one, students? That exactly how the things has to be considered. Sunny? So this will be a 92.3. So what did I told you? Thumb rule. Keep a thumb rule in mind. Whenever the question is there, please make the profit and loss account of the Indian A. PNL of the Indian A students. This is at most important. Otherwise, you will make a mistake the way you did it earlier. I hope that this point is well clear to all of you now. If that is the case, let's go to our next method. Cup method is through. Cup method is the most simplest method. Without explanation, the things really works out well. Come to this one. And congratulations students, ICA has got a new problem on the resale price method. ICA has got a new practical problem on the resale price method. You will ask for which is that particular method? Uh, which is that question? We will do that question also. I have kept it in the chart book also. I have kept it in the chart book also students. Let me give you that particular method. Let's start. Students, in the resale price method, what we have to do? If you see over here, in this context, <coughs> very quickly, all of you, it's better to draw, I'm very fast, I'm giving you to this particular diagrammatic representation. Resale price would mean that the non-resident A would have sold, the non-resident A would have sold the goods to the Indian A Okay, so that is the point. Now, in this context, students, maybe the Indian A would have incurred, would have incurred some additional expenditure on import, on import. Okay, and then thereafter, additional expenditure on in import, and then thereafter, students, the Indian A would have resold the goods as it is resold the goods now accordingly they will also give you the comparable here is the comparable so this is such an important one because here we have to compare this with the transaction net margin method we should always compare this with the transaction net margin method which i'll do it a bit later so herein if you see in the case of non-resident a so what happens there is a case of students. 
the unrelated party the unrelated party students this unrelated party is supplying the goods to this unrelated party students is supplying the goods to whom to another unrelated party and then again then there is a resale then there is a resale of the goods so first and the foremost thing couple of important points i'm telling you because you may make a silly mistakes in these cases please avoid these silly mistakes students in this context the first step students that you all have to do is about calculate the resale margin calculate the resale margin students so that's the first step that you all have to do calculate the resale margin percentage many students are asking sir how do we calculate the resale margin percentage simple and this percentage has to be be careful this resale margin percentage has to be has to be on the selling price on the selling price and not on the cost because if this would have been the cost plus method if this would have been a cost plus method then our endeavor should be to arrive at the margin as a percentage of cost and not as a percentage of selling price you will always keep this point in mind students in a resale price method the margin percentage always has to be on the selling price and not on the cost whereas on the cost plus method the margin that we will determine always has to be as a percentage of cost not as a percentage of selling price is that clear to all of you so in fact you have to calculate the margin that would be simple how you calculate the margin reselling price reselling price by the unrelated party to when they are selling by the the unrelated party when they are reselling the goods that price will be compared with the cost of this particular goods simple put you will get the margin once you get the margin please get the margin percentage margin percentage which is a percentage the percentage on sale once you get the margin percentage on the percentage of sales students the next step students would be from this resale price from this resale price students you will have to reduce the resale margin percentage the resale margin percentage needs to be reduced over here the resale margin percentage needs to be reduced over here and therefore once you reduce this particular price students you will reach where once you reduce the resale margin percentage you will reach over here then if the question provides you to a data relating to the additional cost so 3 is optional Three would be optional in the question, students. Be careful. Point number three would always be optional in the question. And what is this point number three? The additional cost on import will be reduced because I have to compare apple with the apple. So obviously, I need to arrive at. I need to arrive at what is the purchase price? What is the purchase price with this particular price? Uh, with this particular price in that context. So any additional. expenditure any additional expenditure incurred on import will be reduced and the additional expenditure incurred on the import will be reduced in the resale price method shall be reduced so that is the point number 3 and once you are done with this point number 3 now you are at this stage now you are having the price now this is the most important point number 4 now what do you do point number 4 i'm just writing it over here but the point number 4 is at this stage the fourth point students is you need to compare students you need to compare the price arrived price determined and the purchase and the transfer price and the transfer price and adjust and adjust the price which is determined and adjust the price which is determined with uncommon factors in the bracket right students this is the most important stage in the bracket right students here 
the adjustment here the adjustment i'll explain you just copy it on this first here the adjustment will be like cup will be like the cup method the control uh, the comparable uncontrolled price method so point number 4 students is compare the price which is determined and the transfer price so what is the price determined up till this stage in the resale price method so again just quickly recapitulating the entire point first students first step is to calculate the resale price margin that will be through the uncontrolled transactions so you'll get the resale price margin apply the resale pr price margin to the price at which the goods was being sold by the indian e the price at which the goods were being sold by the indian e so that will bring you the bring you to the cost level once you reduce to that particular price it will bring you to the cost level and then whatever is the additional cost that the indian a would have would have incurred on the purchase of the goods whatever is the additional cost which the indian a would have incurred on the purchase of that goods that particular additional cost will be reduced that particular additional cost will be reduced and once you reduce that additional cost students once you reduce this additional cost over here primarily now you will have to see this price is the alp price but if there are uncommon factor between the two transaction which two transaction this transaction of the unrelated party and the transaction with the 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 transaction with the indian a if there are unrelated uh, there are uncommon factors then that price which you have determined will have to be adjusted with the uncommon factor so as to so as to align with all the factors which are there in the international transaction that is the a transaction so all whatever we have discussed just now in the cup the same students discussion will apply over here all that we have discussed in the cup the same discussion students will be made applicable over here and let's on this basis see what is this new ICI question that they have put up in this particular case the new ICI question students question number four Bharat cell phone this is a new one Bharat cell phone students so let's have a look students in this context what it has to say Bharat Cell Phones Limited, BCL of Mumbai and Japan Mobiles Limited, JML of Tokyo are associated enterprise. Good that they have told it outrightly. BCL imported 10,000 mobile handset from JML for rupees 15,000 per handset, which are sold to unrelated parties in India for rupees 20,000 per handset. So be careful, students. BCL is importing 10,000 mobile handset for this one which are sold to unrelated party for rupees 20,000. So can you see the resale price by the Indian A is at 20,000? And this 20,000 I will consider in my step number 2. I will consider this 20,000 in my step number 2 because in step number 2 what I do? The gross margin percentage, what is there? The resale margin percentage I am reducing with the reselling price of the Indian A. With the reselling price with the Indian A. So this I will use it in my step number 2. BCL also imported similar mobile set from Europe Limited of London which was sold with a gross profit margin of 25% on cost. So students be careful. Now this is on cost. What did I told you students? Do I require the margin on cost or selling price? In a resale price method do I require the margin on cost or on selling price? It is on selling price. So they have given us one fourth on cost. So how much at selling price? one fifth on selling price all of you know this calculation no need to explain you if it is one fourth on the cost then it has to be one fifth on the selling price okay fine so i will so what i'll do is that this I, the first step is resale price margin first step is resale price margin in the resale price method the first step is resale price margin i get one fifth the second step is this resale price margin i'm going to reduce it with what i'm going to reduce it with the resale price charged by the Indian A, the resale price charged by the Indian A, so 20,000 minus, minus one-fifth, that is 20%, so that 20,000 minus 20%, so in that case 4,000 will get reduced, 20,000 minus 20%, one-fifth is 20%, so therefore it will result into 4,000 will get reduced and I am getting the price of 16,000. Can I say this 16,000 as the ALP? Hold on. Hold on just now students. I need to check if there are some uncommon factors or not. So therefore I need to consider that. 
JML offered. This is where it is. JML students, can you see that? JML offered quantity discount at two thousand per unit. So JML means in the A transaction, in the A transaction students, international transaction, there is a quantity discount. Whereas in the case of, whereas in the case of EL offered a quantity discount of eight thousand per unit. So students, obviously twelve hundred. There is an excess quantity discount. Twelve hundred. There is an excess quantity discount. Now students, if there is a quantity discount, if students there is a quantity discount in this particular context. So two thousand is my in the Indian A. Two thousand is my quantity discount. International transaction. Okay. Whereas here my uh, quantity discount is only eight hundred. so my purchase price students my purchase price in the purchase price in my international transaction is lower than 1200 lower than 1200 can you say that my purchase price in the international transaction that is the transaction between the a is lower than 1200 isn't it as compared to the purchase price in the unrelated party transaction and that is because of which factor Quantity discount factor. So what I need to do? What I need to do then? I need to also on this sixteen thousand rupees which I have arrived on this sixteen thousand rupees which I have arrived. I have to then reduce this twelve thousand twelve hundred rupees. I will then have to reduce this extra twelve hundred rupees so that the purchase was lower to twelve hundred as compared to the purchase of the unrelated party. How much lower? Twelve hundred. So I need to further give the discount and lower this particular price which I have determined. I have to further, further give discount and lower this particular price which I have determined. This price is essentially sixteen thousand. Is what price? It is nothing but a purchase price subject to the adjustment of. It is nothing but the purchase price. Sixteen thousand is what? It is nothing but the purchase price subject to. the adjustment of unrelated party transaction oh, sorry uh, uncommon factors so therefore this uncommon factor students of 1200 i will reduce it all of you agree to this one mamta all of you agree to this one after that the freight and custom duty paid for import from el who is el el is your unrelated party how much is the freight and the custom duty student that you have paid Fifteen hundred per unit. In respect of purchase from JML, the expenditure towards freight and custom was how much? Five hundred rupees. So what is it, students? Your purchase price in that sixteen thousand. What you have determined in this case, you have higher amount of cost. In this, there is a higher cost because this is nothing but a purchase price. So this purchase price is determined after taking into account, after taking into account, students. the quantity discount sorry after taking into account the debit the debit of the freight and the custom duty of rupees 1500 per unit whereas here my debit is only 500 per unit so in that way if my purchase price which is nothing but the purchase price subject to the uncommon factor if this arms length purchase price i will use the word students arms length purchase price of 16000 this is loaded with this is loaded with loaded with the freight and custom duty of 1500 whereas in my international transaction with the a the freight and customs duty loading is only 500 so there is a higher loading in that arms length purchase price of 16000 which i have determined therefore what i need to do i need to reduce it further and how much i need to reduce it 1000 so as to bring at par the two uncommon factors bring at par the uncommon factor i hope that all of you are clear with this one now this is exactly what you do all of you are clear with this one students this is exactly what you all do fine and by virtue of the adjustment see 20000 thereafter the normal purchase price is 4000 this 20% students quickly have a look <coughs> normal gp margin 20% on sale 4000 after that the incremental quantity discount in my incremental quantity discount in my uh, a transaction this incremental quantity discount in my a transaction 
I need to reduce it further. So therefore, I need I am reducing it 1200. Now, the 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 customs and the insurance and the freight, the insurance and freight in this unrelated party is higher. So whatever is the purchase price, the A, the the ALP purchase price which I have determined of 16,000 before adjusting the uncommon factor, this is loaded with loaded with the insurance and freight at 1500 rupees whereas this is at 500 rupees so obviously students i need to bring it down to 500 to bring it down to 500 i need to reduce it and this is my arm's length price this is my arm's length price but what is the purchase price what is the actual purchase price the actual purchase price is 15000 whereas the arm's length price students is 13800 so you can see in this case there is a higher amount of purchase price there is a higher amount of purchase price so by virtue of higher amount of purchase price I have reduced my profit, I have paid a less tax liability, so will the transfer pricing adjustment, will it be made on adoption of the ALP at 13,800? Will the transfer pricing adjustment, will it be made on adoption of the ALP at rupees 13,800? Answer is yes, it will be. It will be done students. Is that clear to all of you students? All of you are clear with this one. Students, this is for all of you. This is for all of you, your popular adjustment. What is adjustment? The resale price method. All of you are clear with this one or not, students. Please tell me. Any doubt, please do let me know. Otherwise, students, it will be an issue. Please, this is your last chance. After that, students, there is no chance. There, This is the last chance, students. After that, there is no further chance. Amruta, Sunny, all of you clear? So, can I go to the cost plus method? With your permission, students, can we then go to the cost plus method? Fine. Meenakshi, good evening. So, cost plus method, Amruta. With that now, cost plus method, congratulations. ICI has introduced a new practical question in the module. And don't worry, students, in the chart, I have also included that practical questions for all of you so all the new questions introduced by the ICI in their module I have covered up in this chart and we are going to do it now let's then see the cost plus method let's then see the cost plus method students <coughs> students ensure to all the students ensure to like the video and share this particular video to all your friends who are there do let them be aware because what is the situation from the channel has changed Earlier, I was we were doing in different channel, and now we are doing it in this channel. So please do let them know because many students may not be aware of that about this new channel which we are have, we have migrated to. So please do like the video and do share this particular video across to all your friends so that they are aware that henceforth in the YouTube revision lectures and all we will be doing it in this channel. So at least they are aware of this one. Okay. So once they subscribe to the channel, automatically they, they will get those links. Fine, Saranya. Okay, thank you. Cost plus method, Sunny. Let's go, let's do this one. <coughs> students, what is cost plus method? At the name suggest, first of all, just try to visualize. In the examination, students, simple example I am giving it to you. JP Morgan Chase, Mumbai. JP Morgan Chase India is an associated enterprise of Morgan Stanley US. JP Morgan India, they are the associated enterprise of Morgan Stanley. Now, generally, students, the functions that the JP Morgan provides to Morgan Stanley is more like what? The functions which JP Morgan provides to Morgan Stanley students is more like the MIS functions, the management information system. So, a MIS function is what they provide. <coughs> so, what they do, every month, like they have got 20 to 30 CAs in their office. And every month, they keep on giving the MIS report to Morgan Stanley. To Morgan Stanley. That is what they do. So, now, obviously, the billing would be monthly. The billing is regular and the billing is monthly. The billing is regular and the billing is monthly. So, students, what they do now in this regard is that the billing they will raise to whom? To Morgan Stanley. Now, how they will, which method they, they will apply? 
in their transfer price so the method students that they will apply would be this method of cost plus method the method students that they will apply in this case is the cost plus method you'll say sir what exactly this method is so generally they also know we have got 20 30 cas and we also have to give them the per month salary to these cas so their salary plus their office overhead also is monthly the office overhead is also monthly isn't it and maybe then thereafter some more other staff expenditure or some other expenditure which are on monthly basis they will add all the cost now this cost students will comprise of both the direct and the indirect cost this cost will comprise of both the direct and indirect cost and then they will have the markup and then they will do the markup now i told you what students this markup would be a markup as a percentage on the cost and on that basis we will come to know we will come to know what should be the alp ultimately students here the game is on what is the markup percentage ultimately students here the game is what is the markup that you are putting because see the cost is fixed the cost is static as the name suggests cost plus method so ultimately the premium is on what on what is the margin that you are charging because the cost cannot be altered this is something which is there okay so what is there it is there but primarily what is the markup percentage that you are charging is exactly what needs to be looked upon and once the cost is added to the markup we will get the arms length price that is a price that you should have charged to morgan stanley and we will come to know against that what is the actual price that you have charged against that what is the actual price that you have charged so if the actual price charge by jp morgan india to morgan stanley us if the actual price charge is lower as compared to the alp then in that case whether we need to do the transfer pricing adjustment whether it will result into the additions in the total income and the answer is yes but look into other way round look into other way round students the other way round is if if what if the actual price the other way round in this particular case students you all are aware now the other way round students in this particular is that if the transfer price which is charged by jp morgan to morgan stanley is higher as compared to alp if it is higher as compared to alp will you be doing any adjustment in this case will you be doing any adjustment in this case to that the answer students as you all are aware to that the answer students as you all are aware answer is no why because if you do it it will result into a downward adjustment it will result into a downward adjustment and 92 subsection 3 specifically prohibits prohibits for the downward adjustment i think all of you are clear with this one now on that note quickly looking into the cost plus method and then going directly to the ici question students going directly to the ici question students so let's have a look students on this particular point in this context <coughs> cost plus method total direct or indirect cost of production i already told you we have to first take whatever is the cost direct as well as indirect cost take the total cost of the a transaction take the total cost of the a or the international transaction on that total cost on that total cost add the gp margin okay now they you will come to know the gp margin of what is the gp margin which should uh, which is which is uh, which is what is a fair gp margin what is a fair gp margin that should have been charged or may i say what is an uncomparable control transaction gp margin that should be charged in this case but as you all are aware the uncontrolled uh, the uncontrolled comparable transaction gp margin should be adjusted adjusted with the uncommon factors with the uncommon factors between the two transactions so as to align with align with what align with all the factors which are there in the international transaction so that adjustment is mandatory so whatever is the gp margin that you have got from the uncontrolled transaction that gp margin needs to be adjusted with the uncommon factor between the two transaction so that now what you will do you will do the adjustment relating to the uncommon factor so that it aligns to the factors which are there or not there in the international transaction 
it aligns to the factors which are there or not there in the international transaction and once you get the adjusted gp margin once you all get the adjusted gp margin that adjusted gp margin will be added to the total cost and once that adjusted gp margin will be added added to the total cost you will get the alp you will get the alp students is that clear to all of you all of you are clear with this one and once you get the alp please compare once you get the alp students please compare the alp with the with what you are going to compare exactly you will then compare the alp with the transfer price which has been charged and the difference will be the transfer pricing adjustment the difference will be the transfer pricing adjustment let's do this question so these are the comprehensive revision lecture students on these particular topics a company limited is an indian company at pune it provides software development service to various customer and also to its associate enterprise who is a miami usa it built two crores for the software development service rendered to b company during the year 21 22 so you already have the transfer price runs you already get the transfer price runs so this is the transfer price yes there after the total cost direct or indirect incurred for executing the work was how much 175 lakhs 135 lakhs in the case of unrelated parties for similar service in the case of the unrelated parties for similar service a company limited earned a gross profit of 50% on cost in the case of what the unrelated parties for similar service a company limited earned a gross profit of how much runs 50% on the cost 50% on the cost fine now obviously students we have got this margin gross margin we have got we also know the total cost isn't it so we got the, both the things 135 lakhs is the total cost primarily which is there uh, in the a transaction the 135 lakhs of the total cost in the a transaction you need to add with the 50% 50% of what 50% of this one but hold on this margin is what i need to adjust adjust with the uncommon factor so as to ensure that it aligns to it aligns to the factors which are there or not there in the international transaction so i need to align this one and get the adjusted gp and only the adjusted gp i am going to add with the total cost and that way i'm going to get my alp let's see the uncommon factor uncommon factor point number 1 b company limited provided the technology support to a company limited in the software development project assigned by it so be careful students b company limited is providing the technology support to a company limited so they are providing what these technology support to a company limited in the software development project assigned by it so it implies that the a please pay attention students the associate enterprise that is us non resident a is providing to the indian a software development uh, sorry technology support service students think logically now your logic is very important in this case if the indian a is getting a technology support if the indian a is getting a technology support so the indian a will it charge high higher price or lower price if i am getting the technology support from you then when i have to charge you a price will i be charging on a higher side or on the lower side if i am getting a technology support from you obviously students the answer has to be on a lower side so my say the price would be on a lower side and if my price sunny is on the lower side then in that particular case my margin will it be on a higher side or a lower side the margin will it be on a higher side amruta or on the lower side it would be on the lower side the margin accordingly students will be on the lower side now if obviously students in the international transaction in the a transaction there is a technology support that is available whereas in the case of unrelated transaction technology support is not available so if the technology support is not available in the unrelated transaction so the margin would be higher margin would be higher what did i told you 
we need to align the comparable transaction we need to align the margin in the comparable transaction with the factors which are there in the international transaction or the a transaction we need to align this particular thing with the factor which are there in the international transaction or the a transaction so please align it and if i have to align it what i need to do i need to reduce if i need to align it students what i need to do i need to reduce is that clear to all of you so accordingly students in case of unrelated party the value of technology support expenditure for similar project would be 70,50,000 <clears throat> so this is given to you in the absolute terms in this context students this has been given to you in the absolute terms <clears throat> so can I say this is a in this case students can I say in the absolute terms I need to get a percentage students if you are giving me in the absolute terms so let us get into the percentage how much on cost then how much on cost so this is 10% of the cost 10% of the cost isn't it so therefore in this context so 10% of the cost students so I always get this here 10% so that exactly what we will do so this is the 10% can you see that students so I need to reduce my margin how much is the margin 50% margin so 50% of the cost so I need to reduce first adjustment 10% gone congratulations students 10% gone so now it's at 40 it is now at 40 hold on race is not over till it is over the race is not over students till it is over so please have a look to this one the next point now students obviously i will not be don't expect me to deal with this uh, simplest of the things which i'll give you homework you will say which is the homework like range concept arithmetic mean and average and all okay i think that is something which you also agree is very simplest of the data isn't it so that at least we will focus on all the important other areas now coming to point number two over here students point number two a limited a company limited gave discount of 10 percent to b company limited and this benefit is not given to outside customers this benefit is not given to outside customer now please tell me <coughs> if a limited is giving a benefit to B limited 10 percent discount has been given you have to tell me students will my price will be going down will the price will go down in the international transaction whether the price will it go down or not quickly say students whether the price will it go down and the answer is yes discount has been given in the international transaction in the A transaction so if you are giving the discount in the international transaction or in the a transaction the price will go down if the price will go down margin will also go down now obviously students we can easily make it out obviously students we can easily make it out that this discount is not given in the uncontrolled transaction so there the margin of 50 percent is on a higher side so what i need to do i need to reduce it i need to reduce it students and that exactly what we will be doing it so that 10% students we need to reduce it further that discount of 10% students we need to reduce it further students <coughs> yes and yeah, I'll do that point number three a company limited carried out the marketing function in respect of transaction with B company limited and incurred 13 lakh 12,500 students can you see that and they have incurred 13 lakh 12,500 rupees students so a company limited carried out the marketing functions in respect of transaction with b company limited and they have incurred how much runs 13 lakh 12,500 rupees this marketing function is not normally provided by a company limited to outside parties so obviously they are clearly saying that this we don't give it to anyone this kind of a marketing support we are not giving it to anyone students is that clear to all of you so in that situation students in that particular situation if you see it very carefully please tell me what will happen <clears throat> will the price would be on a higher side or on the on the lower side in the international transaction point number three please tell me in the international transaction point number three will it 
selling price mamta will it be on a higher side or on the lower side it definitely will go on a higher side why because i students sunny here be careful i am providing what i am providing means the indian ae is providing a marketing function in respect of transaction with the b company limited and accordingly if that is a case students i will definitely charge this thing to my in, in, in the the this one i will be charging them for this one particular price this marketing function students is not normally provided by a company limited to outside this was not provided to outside so students or this will be on a higher side students if it is on a higher side students now you can tell me if it is on a higher side in this situation will i be adding to the marketing function my price would be on a higher side the price will be on the higher side so will be my margin percentage If a price is now is on the higher side, so will be my margin percentage. Now this thirteen lakh twelve thousand five hundred, Sunny. If my price is on the higher side, my margin will also go up. If the price is on the higher side, the margin will also go up. Now this I am not providing to the unrelated parties. This I am not giving it to unrelated party. So there my selling price would be on the lower side. There my selling price would be on the lower side. Do you all agree to this one? And that exactly why marketing function performed. we need to add how much this is how much on cost how much is on this is on cost 7.5% 7.5% on cost so therefore 7.5% and the last one student point number 4 point number 4 last one student this is also logical a company limited provided the extended credit period and the credit is 2.5% of the cost so in the case of the a transaction A transaction, international transaction. My non-resident A is asking from me that kindly give me the credit. My non-resident A student is asking from me the credit. And if my non-resident A is asking from me the credit, <coughs> if my non-resident A is asking from me the credit students, then in that particular case, please tell me if the credit is asked, so my selling price would go up. because you are asking me credit as compared to a, another customer who is not taking the credit so the per customer who is not taking the credit the price will be on a lower side whereas with the international transaction with my non resident ae they are asking for credit though so the price will go up if the price will go up proportionately the margin will also go up so if the margin goes up in my international transaction so that i need to add that i need to add with the margin of the uncontrolled transaction so as to align the factors vis a vis my international transaction so as to align with the factor vis a vis the international transaction all of you agree to this one yes so therefore students this 2 and 1/2 percent of cost 2 and 1/2 percent of cost is what i need to add so 50 percent minus 10 minus 10 and thereafter so total 30 after 30 10 percent is what is to be added 2 and 1/2 and 7 percent and 1/2 percent so therefore markup adjusted markup students how much is my adjusted markup how much is adjusted markup 40% 40% on the cost what is the cost cost is 135 lakhs 135 lakhs and of 135 lakhs of the cost students markup is 70% 40% which gives you 70 rupees 70 rupees so accordingly how much amount should i have charged what should be my selling price what should be my selling price to the non resident a 245 against that what is my actual selling price 200 what should be my adjustment 45 45 lakhs should be my transfer pricing adjustment i hope that all of you are clear with this one every one of you are clear any doubt students please do let me know <coughs> any doubt students please do let me know now so in this case this is what i strongly feel that a probability of cost plus method or the resale price method to be there in the exam strongly i feel this for the thing two methods this and this okay the next method students is the transaction net margin method now students one thing which is there just pay, pay please pay attention to this one <coughs> mamta बिल्कुल 
So now students, if you see it very carefully, students, if you all see it very carefully, what all we all get it, be careful on this one. See transaction net margin method, but TNMM method, there is one very important part that you should keep in mind. TNMM method students has two variants. There are two variants of TNMM method. Two variants of TNMM method. You will say, what is the two variants, sir? I'll tell you, students. So they are difficult to answer me right now because it will be completely a chaos at this stage. But I'll answer it later on, this particular part. Difficult to answer this one. It's unrelated right now. I will not be in a position to because this will be completely breaking the concept. But you can ask me later on. Okay. So TNMM method, students, if you see cost variant and the resale price variant. Resale price variant. Shuddhadev, just pass on this particular new, because all the revision lecture, Shuddhadev would be on this particular video. So you just ensure to pass on this one to all the, the friends and all the old groups also. Because uh, this is where now we will be giving this entire lecture sense for. Okay, so therefore just pass on this particular uh, YouTube link. Now for this cost variant, which is there, is similar to cost plus method in fact students those who pe those people would have done this question on tnmm in the examination many of you many of you would have realized that sir we have got two questions so far in the examination on tnmm method but we failed to realize that whether that particular question was of cost plus method or tnmm method that is a kind of scenario which exists so just simply put students TNMM method, which is a cost variant, cost plus method. So it is actually, you'll find that all the data is actually relating to the cost plus method. So I'm not discussing this, but yes, you can find the past year question. So you can just go through directly, go directly to past year question. Couple of questions are there. Just do it and finish it off. Alpha limited. I suppose this was the question of alpha limited, if I'm not mistaken, in the past year paper. Alpha and Gamma Limited, something like that is said. Okay, so therefore, in this context, go directly to the the the, the past year paper students. Past year. For this cost variant. Now, when it comes to the resale price, this is a game. This is a game, students. This has not been targeted in the TNMM method up till now. Again, I'm repeating, students, cost variant, don't worry. It is just a carbon copy. Yeah, Alpha Limited. Alpha Limited. It is just like a carbon copy of cost plus method. In fact, whatever cost plus method question that you people would have, whatever is a transaction net margin method that you people would have done, it is just resembling, it is resembling completely with the transaction net, uh, the, the, the cost plus method. What is important is this resale price variant. What happens with now please pay attention. All of you pay attention to this resale price variant. This is what has not been asked in the examination and I think this can be targeted in the exam. Please pay attention. Now, students, <coughs> I am purchasing the raw material from my A. Be careful. I am purchasing the raw material from my A. Thereafter, I am processing it to the final product. Processing it to what? To the final product. And then that final product is what is sold. Then that final product is what is sold. Now, you tell me, students, in this particular case, you have to tell me, students, in this particular case, you have purchased the raw material process it to the final product and thereafter the final product has been sold isn't it please tell me now all of you please tell me now in this particular case that whether you can apply the resale price method in this regard can you apply a resale price method so purchase the raw material from your non-resident AE process it to the final product and once the goods are processed to the final product then you are selling it off then the question <coughs> Question to all of you is whether you can, whether you can students do it this particular thing or not. Quickly, whether students you can go with the resale price method, Sunny, Amruta, Shelly. Answer is no. 
not possible and this is where the transaction net margin method comes into play mamta the transaction net margin method comes into play now students rtp has been released yesterday all of you are aware of it and therefore this week upcoming week i'll be doing the rtp with all of you uh, at night i am going to do students what time at night 10:15 after 10:15 fine just i thought of it telling to all of you so rtp of december 2021 minakshi so that will be done uh sorry may 2022 that will be done which day many students are asking the date i'm not mainly students wednesday or thursday one of the two dates when is your thursday at night but 10:30 did you all got this one here only we are going to do it in this for your youtube channel okay <clears throat> five rooms just a second <clears throat> students i want all of you to copy it on this chart of transaction net margin method no when is it thursday 16th 17th march yes should do it at the end yes <coughs> so friends have a look please copy it on this one so non resident e be careful you will come to know and you will appreciate where the difference come between between whom between the resale price method and the transaction net margin method you people will come to know now please have a look the non resident e and the indian e okay so he has supplied supplied the raw material <coughs> to the indian e yes supplied the raw material to the indian e and then what they have done process to make a final product and the final product is sold okay have you all copied on this one now this is unrelated party information they would have also supplied the raw material to the indian entity processed to final product and sold have you all completed up till your friends quickly amruta <coughs> <laughs> tomorrow morning the lecture timing would be at 9:30 yeah? tomorrow morning is at 9:30 just keep that in mind <clears throat> now friends over here if you see friends over here if you all see chali <laughs> first step is the first step is calculate net margin now this net margin students because it's a resale price variant this net margin should be a percentage of selling price this resale this particular net margin should be a percentage of what selling price did you all got this one this particular net margin should be a percentage of selling price i hope that all of you 930 minakshi 
calculate the net margin as a percentage of selling price. Now please be careful. I told you just now before you proceed. Tell me one thing here. The transaction net margin which is having the cost variant. There also the percentage of margin. The margin percentage students. The margin percentage students here would be. On the cost. Because it's a cost variant TNMM. Whereas here in the transaction and margin method, <coughs> here the net margin would be the percentage of the selling price. Here the margin would be the margin would be to calculate the net margin as a percentage of selling price because this is a variant of which variant? The variant on the selling price. Because it is a variant on the selling price, we will have to take into account the percentage of selling price. Is that clear to all of you? Minakshi? Is that clear to all of you students? And the answer is yes. So here now, this is what it is. Now step number two students, be careful. This is where is the difference with the resale price method. This is the difference with the resale price method. And what is the difference? The difference is this that, students, point number two, is this that adjust adjust the uncommon factor of the two transaction of the two transaction to align with the factor in the international transaction to align with the factor with the international transaction so after step number two students now <coughs> here in the same thing students here in here what i'll say would be that the the thought process the 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 same thought process is required same thought process is required as we did in resale price method in step 4 the only thing is that once here we do it in step 2 but the same thought process that we had like you can refer that question of Bharat, that question of Bharat that we did in the resale price method, same question you can think of it. Okay, so the way we have given a thought that look, he has given this, that customs duty, freight and that quantity discount, the way we have thought in that question, same thing you are going to think here also. But the only change that is there in this method is that this thought process will be in step number two, whereas in the resale price method, that will be in step number four. Is that clear to all of you? This thought process will be in step number two versus in the resale price method, it will be in step number four. I hope that all of you are clear with this one. Now, this will give you what, students? This will give you the adjusted margin percentage. <coughs> this will give you the adjusted net margin percentage. Now, this you should get as a percentage of sale. I already told you in the resale price methods or the transaction net margin method, which is having the variant of resale, which is having a variant of resale. We need, we need what? The adjusted net margin as a percentage of sale. Is that clear to all of you students? Please confirm. Clear? <clears throat> all of you if this is clear to all of you students I'll go to the next step now all, all of you are aware now everyone can now do the remaining step I think without telling itself you will come to know what is the remaining step students the remaining step would be point number 3 here from this selling price you will minus the adjusted 
adjusted T NMM, uh, sorry, adjusted margin, net margin. is what needs to be reduced after coming to this i will come to the total cost i will come to the total cost so on the step number three i will come to total cost then fourth one reduce reduce what the additional cost which is the processing cost and this will bring me to alp this step number four will give me what alp this step number four will give me the ALP. I hope that every one of you are clear with this one. Every one of you are clear with this one. <coughs> Fine students. Shall we proceed to the last method and then move on? Quickly students, shall we proceed to the last method and then move on? Your permission. Perfect. Let them start with the next particular thing. <coughs> <clears throat> reference over here if you see all of you methods are through important practicals I have given it by doing a limit these are the limited questions you will say sir we could have done one question on transaction net margin method see there is no question on transaction net margin method there is only a probability that it will come in the examination but what what did I, what did I did now right now students at least I told you now that you need to have the same thought process what you have the thinking process in step two of tnmm method which is a resale variant the same thought process you are having it step number four of the resale price method so just think of the bharat adjustment that we did the question that we did whatever was the adjustment and what is the effect same thing you will do it over here same thing students you will do it over here and that exactly is the point so same thing students you are going to do it over here i hope that all of you are clear with this for now fine students now with that we move forward in this, this con context now students, the last method is a profit split method which is the simplest method which is also not been asked in the examination so therefore please don't uh, leave this particular method because if it comes it's a lollipop for all of you the profit split method students okay let's have a look <coughs> so what we do students here in the case of profit split method so here in the case of profit split method students <coughs> Just like a joint venture is there, students. Joint venture is there. And in that joint venture, I, the Indian A also would have contributed. In that joint venture, the Indian A also would have contributed. Isn't it? And accordingly, Indian A would have also charged a price. The Indian A will also would have charged the price in that particular joint venture. Isn't it? So that is point number one. The Indian A would have also charged the price. Means charge the price means they would have also received the amount as a consideration for their contribution in the joint venture. But then you will realize that the consideration which the Indian A may have received may be less. You would have known that the total profit of that entire project is say 100 crores. Total profit from the entire project is say 100 crores. And then the Indian A relative contribution, the Indian A relative contribution is say 50%. 50%. So if it is 50%, how much profit the Indian A should have got it? Say 50 crores. And on that profit, they will add it to their cost. Whatever is the cost which is there of the Indian A, so that cost will be added to the arm's length price profit margin which the Indian A should have got in that project. So accordingly students in this case that will give you the ALP that is this much of the amount that the Indian A should have received as against what is the actual amount which has been received by the Indian A in this project. 
as against what is the actual amount that the Indian AE should have received in this project. Isn't it? And that students in this context, we will say, that students will say students over here, the difference. <coughs> that exactly what will be the final arms length price adjustment. So the profit split, as the name suggests, this is what it does. So from the entire project profit, split the profit which is attributable to the contribution made by the Indian E in that entire project. Split the entire profit vis-a-vis -vis the contribution which the Indian A E has made in the entire project. So that profit, uh, which is the arms length profit, would be added to all the cost which the Indian A E may have incurred in this entire transaction, which will result into the ALP, which will result into the ALP, and on that ALP compare compare what the price that they have actually received, and the difference, as you all know, students, the difference would be the the transfer pricing adjustment. I hope that every one of you are clear with this one. Now, students, profit split method is also applicable in one more case. Please pay attention. In student 92.2, we have discussed 92.2, the, the common cost allocations and all, the, the apportionment and the allocation of the cost, which we discussed in 92.2. Did you realize that? In 92.2, we have discussed the allocation and the apportionment of the cost. So there also students, the profit split method is applied because what will happen suddenly say for example, there is a R&D related expenditure. Please pay attention over here. The example, the examination question. Supposing students, the Indian pharmaceutical company is a subsidiary company of a US pharma company. The Indian pharma company is a subsidiary of the US pharma company. The Indian pharma company is doing a research R&D activities. This R&D activity undertaken by the Indian Pharma Company results into students. This R&D activity undertaken by the Indian Pharma Company results into a cost. So the, originally the cost is incurred by the Indian AE. Now they will apportion this cost to all these associate entities of this pharma company worldwide. They will apportion this particular cost to all the associate entities worldwide. In that apportionment, even the Indian entity would be there. Do you all agree? In that apportionment, students, even the Indian entity will also try to put up a cost to its own self. Chances are very high that while doing the allocation, they actually retain a higher percentage of cost for itself. While they do the actual allocation, they retain a higher percentage of cost for themselves and distribute a lower cost for the other parties. But then when I apply the profit split method, which implies what? Which implies that based on the relative contribution, based on the relative contribution of each parties, based on the relative contribution of the each party, I then realize, students, I then realize this, that, <coughs> that the Indian entity should only get 10% of the total cost. I then realize that the Indian entity should get only 10% of the total cost, whereas, whereas what runs? Whereas they are retaining a 50% of the cost. So accordingly, students, now we will come to know that what should be retained for itself should be only 10%, but what is actually retained is 50%. So the difference is a higher retention of the cost, which means higher debit. If there is a higher debit, lower profit, lower profit, lower tax. So whether we need to do a transfer pricing adjustment in this case, answer is yes. Whether we need to do a transfer pricing adjustment students in this case, to that the answer is yes. I hope that all of you are clear with this one. All of you are clear with this one students. And this is how the things has to be looked upon in this regard. So with that now students, we proceed further <coughs> in this case. Now students, I will do the range concept and arithmetic mean but towards the end. Because this is simplest of the lot. So I'll do it towards the end. I will now come to the most difficult area, one of the most important area, and that area is the APA. Student, that area is the APA. So what I am primarily will be doing very fast would be range concept, arithmetic mean, and the last one is secondary adjustment. Why is it so? Because these are the simplest of the things which I consider in transfer pricing and everyone loves to do this. 
let's do the technical area and the technical area students is this one APA now students many students are asking sir what about safe harbor rule is the safe harbor rule applicable for us so the rates are not been mentioned therein the rates are not mentioned therein so I will not suggest you to go through the safe harbor rules directly come to the APA directly come to the APA students let's look into this one most likely most likely for May 22 <clears throat> safe harbor but still students MCQ it is very important you will say sir but what to do in MCQ students safe harbor many students are asking sir safe harbor MCQ this students safe harbor is what as a concept at least remember this as a concept students so far students safe harbor is concerned <coughs> in this context in the case of safe harbor what happens is that the Indian A if they are supplying the goods and services as notified by the central government the transaction students will be notified by the central government please pay attention and try to understand this so in respect of the notified goods and services supplied by the Indian A to its non-resident A if in that price which it in that in that price which is charged in that price which is charged by the Indian A to its non-resident associated enterprise the price which has been charged by the Indian A to its non-resident associated enterprise if the price charged students be careful if the price charged has a minimum notified safe harbor margin percentage whatever is the price say price charge is 100 by the Indian A the price charge is 100 if in that price charge if they have shown or they have disclosed that minimum notified safe harbor percentage meaning the minimum margin like the way students 44 AD we have got 8% 6% so that is a minimum profit margin that is disclosed in that particular PGBP isn't it you can show it higher well and good but you cannot go below 8% and 6% same way here itself so whatever is the price which has been charged by the Indian A if in that price the minimum notified margin is collected by the Indian A or is charged by the Indian A then in that particular case the transfer price will be accepted by the department then in that particular case the transfer price will be accepted by the department in which case in which case students there will not be any transfer pricing adjustment which means no ALP will be computed so in respect of a notified transaction <coughs> in respect of a notified transaction the price which has been charged students the price which has been charged has a notified percentage the price which has been charged has a notified percentage minimum notified percentage minimum notified percentage then in that particular case students then in that particular case that particular price which is so charged having a minimum notified percentage primarily that will be accepted by the transfer pricing officers meaning thereby no further adjustment will be required to be made in this regard no further adjustment will be required to be made in this regard is that clear to all of you students now in the examination students what is important is the safe harbor rule applicable for international transaction yes is a safe harbor rule applicable to the specified domestic transaction again the answer is yes so it is applicable for both the international transaction as well as for the specified domestic transaction this safe harbor rule is applicable in respect of both but to what it is not applicable students that is one thing they haven't like there is no such uh, to what it is not applicable is the transaction other than the notified transaction so the government everyone of you are aware they actually give you the list of the notified transaction in which the safe harbor rule has to be applied the list of the notified transaction in which the safe harbor rule has to be applied now presently you don't have to remember the good thing is that you don't have to remember the list but what you need to remember is this that whether in respect of international transaction and the specified domestic transaction whether the safe harbor rule will it be applicable yes secondly what also needs to be remembered is this point students 
एस एस सी फॉर सेफ हार्बर रूल शेल अप्लाई इन दिस फॉर्म विद इन वन मंथ बिफोर द फाइलिंग ऑफ द आर वाई दिस इज ओनली आई एम प्रिपेयरिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू दिस आई एम प्रिपेयरिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर योर एम सी क्यू क्वेश्चन इन द एग्जाम दैट्स इट सेफ हार्बर इज ओनली दिस मच कम टू दिस एपीएम बिग हिट स्टूडेंट बिग हिट एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट वन फॉर मे ट्वेंटी टू स्टूडेंट एज यू कैन सी देर इज अज डिस्प्यूट इन the transpricing chapter like there is a huge dispute which we all see in all the transpricing related cases one of the most effective mechanism to reduce or to eliminate any transpricing dispute is apa one of the most effective remedy students is the apa as the name suggests students apa does what in advance there is a price agreement which is entered in advance there is a price agreement which is entered by by the <coughs> by the indian a with the assessing officers by the indian a with the assessing officers so well in advance what they do students well in advance they enter into this agreement how much advance for 5 years so this is one thing which you should always keep in mind <coughs> this is what you have to always keep in mind for 5 years students for 5 years forward you can decide in advance what should be the alp if alp cannot be decided students students please pay attention if the alp cannot be decided then at least let's decide which method that we will apply to determine the alp because the most important or the most significant controversy or the litigation between the department and the ssc is which is the most appropriate method which is the most appropriate method that is applicable in the ssc's case so this is the most significant dispute arising in this regard and that is the reason why students what did i told you i have told you that between the ssc and the department between the ssc and the department primarily there would be a compromise that will be arrived on the basis of which they will either decide what should be the price that should be charged on which department will have no objection or if not the price then which method that would be considered to determine the alp in the facts and the circumstances of the assessee's case then at least the alp the method for determining the alp the method for determining the alp would be notified the method for the determining the alp would be notified is that clear to all of you students and that is how the things would be considered in this regard now coming on this particular part students what they say here it <coughs> the indian tax payer and the tax authorities the indian tax payer and the tax authority let's have a look over here now <coughs> one thing every one of you are clear that at least for the next 5 years this apa that you obtain is applicable for the next 5 years every one of you are aware of it now knowing the success please understand this apa was a relatively a new concept what has happened is that it is not that i have not been doing the same transaction in the past years i have been doing the same transaction students in the past year as well i have been doing the same transaction in the past year as well but since i haven't taken the apa in those years or maybe the apa was not applicable in those years therefore i and the department could not reach out to a compromise formula and because we cannot reach out to the compromise formula my transfer price was rejected by the assessing officer in the course of the assessment and he adopted a different alp resulting into increase of my total income and thereby my tax liability and accordingly i did not agree to the additions made in the assessment and therefore we are fighting the case in the court that is to say it is in appeal we are fighting the case in the court that is to say that particular matter is in appeal and therefore students therefore students they have given you an important feature of rolling back 
rolling back what students the rolling back of your apa that you have obtained so if the transactions are the same which transaction the transaction for which you have taken the apa the transaction for which you have taken the apa and the transaction for which you want the rollback in the past year the transaction for which you want the rollback for the past year if those transactions are the same then what is that we will say students we will say in this particular case that the rollback will be given to the sse now the rollback students is for four years so five years forward this is for the future transaction and four years backward this is for the concluded transaction of the past years on which there is a litigation between the ssc and department and to resolve the litigation or to settle the dispute that the rollback facility is made available to settle the dispute that the rollback facility is made available now in this context students what the most important thing which the ici is going to target in the examination is about the condition for the rollback what are the conditions so you have to be very careful on some important points condition for the rollback as i told you students same international transaction for the rollback year and the year to which the ap applies i think all of you agree to this one second point is the roi for that rollback year students the roi for that rollback year should have been filed within the due date of section 139 sub section 1 the roi for that rollback year students should have been filed within the due date of section 139 sub section 1 and last but not the least the transpriding report students the transpriding report under 92e should have been filed which is also known as the accountant report so that accountant report under 92e should have also been filed for that rollback year so if you have filed that particular transpriding report for that particular rollback year perfect students then in that particular case the benefit can be extended to the ssc the benefit then of rollback can be extended to the ssc the question that they will target in the examination would be like what if the ssc has filed a bill return what if the ssc has filed a bill return then in that case can he take up the rollback benefit and the answer is no if a bill return has been filed students then the rollback benefit is not available i think all of you will agree fine now non applicability is also equally important in these particular cases the rollback benefit is not applicable which are those cases where the rollback benefit is not available let's have a look students determination of alp has been subject matter of appeal before the iitat and the appeal is disposed of this is important ones so for that rollback year for example for assessment year 1819 i wanted to get the roll back because in that assessment year 1819 i have not taken the apa so i wanted to roll back the apa which i have taken for the future year starting from 2122 previous year 2122 so accordingly i am wanted to do the roll back for that ay but what has happened students is that for that ay 1819 because the case was in litigation and the litigation was before the itat ITAT has already have concluded our case. ITAT has already has concluded our case, and the fact that ITAT has already concluded our case, question therefore is, can I take up this particular rollback benefit? Answer is no. That will be a disqualified year. That will be a disqualified year. Why it is a disqualified year? Because please understand, students. One thing. commonly every one of you here would appreciate that the transfer pricing law is a transaction based law the transfer pricing law students is it a transaction based law answer is yes and the fact that the transfer pricing law is a transaction based law every one of you will agree to this particular point students every one of you will agree to this particular point that being a transaction based law being a transaction based law students <coughs> in this context being a transaction based law primarily the entire entire transfer pricing chapter depends upon the facts and the evidences in the international transaction the facts and the evidences in the international transaction and that ultimately decides the alp or the and that ultimately decides the alp and therefore because it is based on 
the facts and the circumstances and the evidence which are there in the international transaction which ultimately determines the alp ultimately you tell me students who is the final fact finding authority the final fact finding authority students all of you will say it is the itat and because itat is the final fact finding authority if the case is already disposed of by the itat students if the matter is already disposed of the i by the itat which is the final fact finding authority we will say that students we will say that now that very year in my example it was a by 1819 is the disqualified year that particular year will then be considered to be a disqualified year is that clear to all of you students so that year will be disqualified secondly students non applicability of the rollback would be on what the non applicability on the rollback is supposingly students now this is also equally important all these icci are asking the mcq questions and all i've seen there a couple of mcq question on this one so non applicability would be like this students over here yes sunny mamta here in please be careful the profit and loss account supposingly students the sale that has been shown is at 100 sale with the as you usually if you can ask me the specific particular point difficult for me to put it across right now if you can ask me specific which exactly you have not understood it so in this particular context students non resident a here it with the non resident a students you have sold it at 100 rupees you have sold it at 100 rupees students now in that context now the assessing officer has adopted the alp assessing officer has adopted the alp at rupees 90 so the alp which was being adopted by the ao the alp which was being adopted by the ao was rupees 90 Point. So the ALP adopted by the AO would be at rupees ninety. That exactly what it is. Sorry, not ninety. Why they will adopt ninety? They have adopted one twenty. So the ALP is at one twenty rupees. ALP was at rupees one twenty. Now with ALP at rupees one twenty, so obviously what they would have done, the the total income from the total income they would have added, added the additions. How much addition? Twenty rupees. The difference. Assessee would have challenged this addition in the court. The assessee would have challenged this addition in the court, students. So that particular addition would have been challenged in this particular court, and thereafter, subsequently, for the future years, in respect of the same transaction, for the future year, in respect of the same transaction, we have got the APA through the APA. I'll tell you two particular things. APA, which we have got in respect of future transaction, point two points are there. Point number A is rupees hundred and ten, and point number B, students, is say rupees eighty. So the APA in respect of the future year, I'll just write it over here. Over here, the APA students in respect of the same transaction, but for the future five years, I have got which AP? I have got rupees one twenty. And another is eighty. These are two different cases, students. By the way, one hundred and ten. Sorry, one hundred and ten. So with the AP of rupees one hundred and ten, students, <coughs> is it acceptable? This AP will that be accepted for the purpose of doing the rollback? This AP of rupees one hundred and ten will that be accepted for the purpose of doing the rollback? Answer is yes. There is no issue on that. This APA of rupees one hundred and ten will be accepted for the purpose of rollback. There is absolutely no issue on that because the department will come one step below, the SSC will take one step forward. So absolutely fine. So this APA of one hundred and ten, which is there, will be accepted. But what if in the case of the AP of eighty, will AP of eighty will that be considered for the purpose of rollback? knowing that the assessi himself has put up in his roi assessi himself has put up 
in his ROI, the transfer price of rupees hundred. On that transfer price of rupees hundred, he has computed the profit. So he has already self-assessed the transfer price is hundred, computed the profit, paid the SA tax, and now if the APA for the future years in respect of the same transaction is determined at rupees eighty, will it be allowed to be rolled back? Answer is no. Why is it so? Because if you do roll back the same, then in that particular case, this will result into the decrease in the total income as decrease in what the total income as declared by the SSC in his ROI, as declared by the SSC in his ROI, and therefore, students, in that particular case, this particular thing will not be allowed to be accepted. So therefore, can you see that the second point? What their second point says, students? Second point says that effect of decreasing of total income or increasing the loss. Effect of decreasing the total income or increasing the loss. Sunny, Amruta, perfect. That exactly how we will be considering in this case. So effect of decreasing in the total income or increasing the loss. So this example of eighty rupees which I have given it to you, it results into. decrease in the total income as declared in the total as declared in the ROI and hence the rollback benefit is not available clear to all of you now other important point students absolutely ICI has been targeting this question these important notes they are very important for all this point number 8 for case studies for case studies plus students for case studies plus the MCQs All these points has been covered. Important notes on the rollback provision, students. <coughs> Important note on the rollback provision. Now, what exactly it is, students? Let's have a look. Let's have a look, students. The important note on the rollback provision. By the way, just hold on, hold on. Before we do this, just one important point, students. Before I forget, students, can you see that one? APA is available in respect of what? The APA students is available in respect of what? So the APA is available in respect of the international transaction. What about the specified domestic transaction? It is not available at all. So therefore, you should be mindful of the fact that just now we did safe harbor rules. In that safe harbor rule, we discussed that. the safe harbor rule is applicable in respect of both the international transaction as well as the specified domestic transaction whereas the apa is applicable only in respect of the international transaction did you all got this one this is how these people will be targeting the question the exam through the mcqs and all okay with that now let's see the important notes on the rollback provision one by one we'll try to negotiate and wrap it up so in the case of a revised return under section 139 sub section 5 if original return is filed within the due date specified in explanation number 2 now please pay attention students all of you amruta all of you are aware of the fact that today both the original return whether filed under 139 sub section 1 or whether filed under section 139 sub section 4 both these original return so one is within the due date and another is a belated return so both these particular original return can be revised both these original return can be revised all of you agree to this one so if both these returns can be revised the next question that comes is this in this context supposingly students i have filed for that roll back year i have filed the roi under section 13984 and thereafter i am revising this return under 13985 whether the rollback benefit is it applicable to me whether i will be eligible to take up the rollback benefit answer is no i have told you already and i am saying it for the first time or uh, last time that the rollback benefit is available only if you have filed the return within the due date of 13991 the revised return steps into the shoes of the original return so if your original return is under 13994 The same will be character of your revised return, but if the original return is under one thirty nine one, if the original return is under one thirty nine one, the same will also be the character of your revised return. 
so in that case if my original return was under 131 thereafter i have made the revised return for that rollback year so whether in that particular case will i be getting the rollback benefit for that particular year the answer is yes i shall be getting the rollback benefit for that particular year now students i have told you just now point number 2 i am discussing i have told you some time back that to do the rollback it is absolutely important that the tran that the transaction for which you have taken the apa for the future years and the transaction for which you want to do the rollback of the past year these two transaction should be same with each other these two transaction should be same with each other didn't i discuss with all of you this particular point yes so i've already told you this particular point so the transaction shouldn't should be same only then the rollback is possible of the apa that you have taken for the future year what is the criteria of similarity how do we know that these two transaction are the same we are comparing apple with apple and not apple with oranges how do we know that this we know it through student the fir analysis what is this fir analysis the functions performed asset employed and the risks assumed so the functions that has been performed in both the transaction should be the same the functions which is performed in both the transaction should be the same the functions performed in what in the apa transaction whatever functions that i am going to perform in that transaction and the transaction for which i want the roll back the functions should be the same point number 2 the asset which i am going to employ in my apa transaction for the future year and the asset which i have already employed in the rollback transaction these should also be the same and the third one is the risk which i am going to assume in the transaction for which i have taken the apa and the risk which i have already have assumed in the transaction for which i want the rollback also should be the same so if the functions performed asset employed and the risk which is assumed are same for both the transaction then we will say that yes the rollback benefit is available coming to point number 3 as i have told you students that you will have to take up the rollback for 4 years now is there any choice available to us that i can choose and pick which year i want to go for with the rollback is this particular choice or the option available with me as to which is the year for which i need to go with the rollback out of the 4 years answer is no you have only one option that either you go for rollback for all the 4 years or else you don't go for the rollback at all you don't have the choice of picking up or choosing which year out of the 4 years you want to take up the rollback except except if some of the year in that 4 years period are disqualified how they are disqualified we have just now discussed about that in some of the cases it may be disqualified then only that option is available next particular point i have told you that friends if be careful if the itat has decided the matter for that particular year for which you want to take up the rollback if the itat has decided the matter for that particular year for which you want to take up the rollback then we just not have discussed that the rollback benefit or the rollback facility is not available the rollback benefit or the rollback facility is not available students isn't it however students if the itat has only set aside the order for fresh consideration of the matter by the lower authorities with full discretion at the disposal so what are they doing students in this particular case they are only setting aside the order so setting aside meaning thereby did they decided anything in the order did they decided anything answer is no and the fact that they haven't decided anything in that particular order they have simply have set aside and gave the direction to the lower authority with full discretion at their disposal this is very important these words are very important and i'm telling you friends you may take it lightly but mcq questions are deep in the examination sometimes what happens friends i should tell you that the that the uh, that the itat creates restrictions and tells the ao how he should now be going ahead and doing the assessment he, they will give the point so they will make their 
scope defined or they will curtail the scope of assessment if this is what the itat has done it it implies that itat has already made up the mind mind on what exactly what they need to want from this particular case so if that is a case students then in that situation itat you can say has effectively has arrived with their judgment except for the specific point on which the itat want the ao to to collect the evidence and pass the order to collect the evidence and pass the order so if the itat decision of setting aside and giving it back to the ao is with a limited sorry is with the limited jurisdiction to run is with the limited jurisdiction <coughs> so if it is with the limited jurisdiction students then in that particular case the rollback benefit will not be applied because we shall say that the itat has effectively has given its decision itat has effectively has given its decision but as i told you just now if the itat if they would have set aside the order and given a full discretion of to the ao to arrive with the assessment then in that particular case that particular year will be eligible for rollback that particular year will be eligible for rollback i hope that all of you are clear with this one okay after that students these are the few important points that you should always keep in mind and what are the points students that you should keep in mind is this that some important point that the ssc should have filed a modified return there are some procedures okay so the rollback rollback cannot be taken the rollback cannot be taken the rollback provision cannot be given effect to if the applicant has not taken the following action which are the following action students the most important are the two things one is the filing of the modified return within time the filing of the modified return within the time second one is that students for that rollback year because of the litigation is pending for that rollback year because the litigation is pending you at least need to withdraw the case from the court the entire objective of the rollback is for what the entire objective of the rollback is that that we need to students the entire objective of the rollback is that we need to we need to do what students we need to resolve the dispute and the litigation and therefore we are doing the roll we are giving you the benefit of the rollback but supposingly you want the rollback at the same time you also want the appeal to continue is it possible at the same time you also want the appeal to continue is that possible and the answer is no so if you want to go for a rollback kindly do ensure that you have withdrawn the case from the court kindly do ensure students that you have withdrawn the case from the court and the next particular point so withdrawal of the case before the court is mandatory for the purpose of getting the roll back and the last particular point is that you need to also inform why i am withdrawing the case you need to inform to the court to the court that the withdrawal that we are doing is essentially because myself and the department myself and the department have reached to an agreement have reached to an agreement that exactly what they are trying to suggest in this case if you don't do these particular if you don't comply to these particular conditions if you don't comply to this condition can you see this entire agreements get vitiated do you know what does it imply are you aware students what does it imply entire agreement gets vitiated the <coughs> entire agreement get vitiated means forget the rollback rollback gone even that apa that you have taken for the future year even that will get cancelled even that will get cancelled is that clear to all of you students all of you are clear with this one any doubt up to your students quickly tell me okay amrita 
Now the last two points, students, we are dealing with it again. Very important. Last two points is what, students? Is there an option available to us to withdraw, to withdraw the rollback application while maintaining the APA? Is that an option available to withdraw the rollback application? while maintaining the APA is that option available answer is yes this option is available whereby you can withdraw the application of rollback while maintaining your APA but is reverse is true is the reverse is true what do you mean by reverse is true means can I withdraw the APA while I want to continue with the rollback application can I withdraw the APA while I want to maintain my rollback application? Is this possible? Answer is no. It was because of the APA that you got the rollback. So how that is possible that the substance is taken away and you just want to retain the form, which is the rollback? Not possible. The substance is the APA of the future year. So therefore, there can never be a case where you can think of that I want to maintain the rollback, but I don't want now APA with that particular price. This cannot be done. I hope that all of you are clear with this one. Okay, and the last point, students, if you see here, point number 10, very important. Very important point, students. So far as point number 10 is concerned, if you see over here, point number 10, in case of merger, or the merger of companies, the person or the company who makes the APA application would only be entitled to enter into the agreement and be entitled for and be entitled for the rollback provision in respect of the international transaction undertaken to it by the rollback years. What does it imply? This is they will give you this question in the examination. Be ready for this question, Saranya. Be ready for this question. A limited and B limited. Now, A limited students is amalgamating company. B limited is amalgamated company. Okay. A limited has taken the APA. APA has been taken by A limited. Okay, after that, they amalgamate, after that they amalgamates with B limited. So obviously when it amalgamates with B limited, A limited will lose its existence. A limited will lose its existence. Isn't it? Question therefore is in this regard, is this that whether B limited can take the rollback benefit the rollback benefit in respect of in respect of the APA obtained by A limited whether B limited can take the rollback benefit in respect of the AP obtained by A limited. What is your take students in this case? Is it possible? Is it possible students? Point number 10. Is it possible or not? Quickly students. To that students the answer is Mamta. B limited cannot. This is what it says. This is what it says. Fine. But if they would have done a reverse case, Amruta, if they would have done a reverse case, reverse case means what? If B limited would have been merged in A limited, if B limited would have been merged in A limited, then yes, this particular rollback of the B limited case could have been done. Could have been done. That is the possibility. But A limited going to be A limited loses existence primarily, then Ujwal 
in that case we will say that b limited cannot take up the rollback benefit b limited cannot take up the rollback benefit in respect of the apa obtained by <coughs> ap obtained by a limited clear students all of you with that students we are done with this important point now the last point is about the modified return modified return and thereafter students documentation today students we will complete till documentation today students will complete till documentation okay so tomorrow thereafter students what i am going to do in one hour's time tomorrow students i am going to finish off the balance area of transfer pricing and thereafter the next one hour i am going to focus on equalization levy the equalization levy so that's a two targets which i will have it for the tomorrow session so after this documentation thin capitalization the easier one let's look into that but let's first finish off the difficult one concept of modified return students now concept of modified return now just now we discussed that for the rollback year you have to file the modified return for the rollback year students you will have to file the modified return why you have to file the modified return because you have accepted the apa and because you have accepted the apa you yourself are you are yourself have agreed to modify your transfer price you have shown the transfer price or in respect of the sale that you have made to your non resident a at rupees 100 that was your transfer price in respect of the sale that you have made to your non resident a at rupees 100 thereafter students the apa that was being adopted was rupees 110 thereafter the apa that was being adopted was rupees 110 that 110 students was being accepted that 110 students was being accepted or not yes shelly and therefore now since you have accepted the trans the ap of 110 it modifies your own roi and since it modifies your own roi you have to file a modified return within a period of 3 months from the end of the month in which the said agreement was entered the modified year is to be filed students for the rollback years by the way i should tell you the modified return has to be filed for the rollback years for that four rollback years sub so for that four year for that four rollback years you need to file the modified return will you will have to pay the additional tax will you have to pay the additional tax why not you have to pay the additional tax you also thereafter will have to submit the proof of the payment of the tax you will also will have to submit the proof of the payment of the tax okay <clears throat> now should in this particular context this is what it is be careful what is the consequence on the assessment what would be the consequence of the on the assessment based on the modified return that you have filed based on the modified return that you have filed students please pay attention this is very important so what is the consequence students we will discuss on that particular position what is the consequence students we will discuss on that particular position so here students if you all see in this context it depends upon whether students it will depends upon whether your assessment for that particular year the assessment should for that year is completed or not you have to ask this question that for that particular year whether the assessment is completed or it is pending ultimately that will decide what can be done if the assessment is already completed for that particular ay for which now you are filing a modified return for which now you are filing a modified return then the assessing officer students in this particular case then the assessing officer in this particular case can do what students you should be aware of it the assessing officer can only modify the total income the ao can only modify the total income earlier prior to the amendment they could actually reassess the total income of the ssc but now the mandate is very limited and it is very categorical to only modify the order of assessment to only modify the order of assessment 
सो दिस इज वॉट इज द लिमिटेड मैंडेट दैट इज अवेलेबल टू ऑल ऑफ यू दिस इज वॉट इज द लिमिटेड मैंडेट दैट इज अवेलेबल टू ऑल ऑफ यू and that exactly is the point students in this regard i hope that every one of you are clear with this one now by when up to by when the modified return up to by when sorry the reassessment order should be passed based on the modified return filed by the ssc in this first case based on the modified return filed by the ssc in this first case so it should be passed within one year from the end of the financial year in which the modified return was furnished within one year from the end of the financial year in which the modified return was furnished so obviously when you furnish the modified return so you will pass your order which order order for that rollback year for which assessment was already completed so this order that you are going to pass will be only to modify the original order which the assessing officer has already have passed now that modification that the ao will do should be done within the period of 1 year that modification that the ao will have to do has to be done within 1 year from the end of the financial year in which the modified return was furnished this would be in the case of a completed assessment what if friends if it is a pending case then so if the assessment or reassessment proceeding is pending on the date of pending on the date of filing of the modified return then what happens in this regard so if it is pending students in this particular context the ao shall assess or reassess or recompute the total income of the relevant assessment year having regard to and in accordance with now this is the game so say for example for that rollback year the assessment was still going on while i filed my modified return the original assessment was still going on students while i filed my modified return then what is the implication the implication would be now whether the ao whether the ao will have the power to reassess or recompute whether the ao will have the power to reassess or recompute based on that particular modified return answer is yes so did you realize the difference if the assessment is already completed and thereafter the modified return is filed then the jurisdiction available with the ao is only to modify its order whereas if the assessment for that particular rollback year is pending and thereafter the modified return has been filed then in this particular case the ao shall reassess or recompute the entire total income and because he is reassessing or recomputing the entire total income the time limit to complete the assessment will also change now many students are asking sir what is the time limit here so if you know students if you talk about the time limit the of regular assessment which is there say 143 or 144 the normal assessment time limit students is available is 9 months this is the normal 9 months from the end of the relevant ay from the end of the relevant ay this is the normal assessment time limit okay now if it is a plus because it is a transferring case what happens this 9 months will be added to 12 months more 12 months more and every transferring case every one of you are aware for every transferring case students we add this 12 months and now plus further did you all got this one whatever is the time limit available can you see this this 12 months also further would be added so now in all primarily how many total period is available time limit on in this category what will be the time limit available before the ao to complete the assessment so the time limit available before the ao to complete the assessment would be 33 months from the end of the relevant ay from the end of the relevant ay 33 months from the end of the relevant ay did you all got this one 33 months from the end of the relevant ay i hope that all of you are clear with this for now every one of you are clear this is a status quo in this regard if all of you are clear to this particular context students now we will go to the documentation part our next category documentation again a very important particular area 
so far as the documentation is concerned okay documentation students students <coughs> documentation requirement can you see this one now the most important as you all know is the country by country reporting and the master file here is the most important mcq question mcq question students this paragraph is mcq can you see the difference please read this 92d these two bullet points these two are the most important mcq question read it who knows this is the time this is the time students where fortune is going to turn please read these two bullet points <coughs> Can anyone tell me the difference between the bullet point one and bullet point two? Difference between the two, Amrita. This ninety-two D, by the way, it is. the local file is the local file any clue be between these two students see exactly excellent indeed amruta in the second case is whether the international transaction has taken place yes mamta excellent i think you people have got it whether the international transaction has taken place or not whether the international transaction has taken place or not are you supposed to file are you supposed to still maintain the documents for that year answer is yes whereas in the first case students whereas in the first case students it is necessary that the international transaction or a specified domestic transaction should have taken place in that year only then for that year only then for that year the requirement to maintain the documents under section 92d will arise the requirement to maintain the documentation under 92d will arise students you have to be very careful of this point very careful students of this particular point now if you see very carefully over here you will say sir but who, to who to whom it is applicable second bullet point is applicable to a constituent entity of an international group Look, sir. Sir, any example of constituent entity of international group? Coca Cola, India Private Limited. <coughs> India Private Limited. Now, can I say Coca Cola India Private Limited is a constituent entity of the international group? Can we say so? Coca Cola India Private Limited. is a constituent entity of the international group can that be said students answer is yes so coca cola india private limited being a constituent entity of an international group shall keep and maintain such information document in respect of an international group international group okay the information should be in respect of the international group how about the this is for whom then this is for say for example infosys infosys or wipro family now they are not a they are although indian multinational company okay they are the indian multinational companies 
So for Indian multinational company, at least one relief which is there that supposedly if they haven't done the international transaction, say with their subsidiary outside India, say with their subsidiaries outside India, if say Infosys or the TCS India has not done the international transaction with their subsidiaries outside India, then in that particular case TCS or Infosys or Wipro will not be required to maintain the documentation under 92D for that particular year. But that is not the case with Coca-Cola India Private Limited which is a constituent entity of the international group even if they may not have done the transaction in that particular year even though they may not have done the international transaction in that particular year still they will have to maintain students still they will have to maintain the documentation in respect of the international group i hope that all of you are clear with this one now the next and the most important two more documents to go students and one is the cbcr country by country reporting and another students another students you all are aware is is the master file so directly I will first take you to the CBCR first and then I will take you to the master file. So let's come to the CBCR first. CBCR students as you all are aware it's a huge and the massive one. The country by country reporting which is required in this context. Okay. Students again I will just re request to all of you again this is okay. Do like this particular video and subscribe to this video because and share this video across it because all now henceforth the revision channel is going to be only in this particular YouTube video. We have migrated from all the channels means an academy would now be only be doing the revision videos in this channel. So this would be the only one. Okay, so therefore like it, subscribe it and do share to across to all the other friends of yours primarily so that they do know this is the place otherwise they will be wait subscribing there and they will be waiting for the notification nothing will come are you getting this one friends anyways so if you see over here whether the total consolidated group revenue as reflected in the cfs for the accounting year preceding the relevant tax year is greater so obviously students you are talking about country by country reporting just imagine think of coca cola as a company just visualize Coca-Cola presence in more than 100 countries across the world and if Coca-Cola have to file CBCR which they do obviously they do file CBCR they have to file CBCR in one country in one country for all the 100 locations worldwide for in respect of all the 100 locations worldwide they will have to file the CBCR for CBCR with the parent country location. So whichever country they are parent, like they are parent of US. So in that particular country, that is US, they will have to file the CBCR. They will have to file students the CBCR in respect of all the countries across the world. In respect of all the countries wherein they have their physical presence across the world. That is what it is students, that is what it is and therefore students, the compliance of CBCR is huge and hence they want to put up the burden of compliance only to those particular entities whose consolidated group revenue as uh, reflected in their consolidated financial transaction for the relevant accounting year for the relevant accounting year is how much 6400 crores more than 6400 crores obviously students you know earlier it was 5500 crores now it has been increased to 6400 crores if you say no sir the turnover is not going beyond 6400 crores then the cbcr is not applicable if you say yes the turnover is going beyond this particular threshold limit then ask the question please ask the question this is where it is now please tell me one thing Coca-Cola will be filing the CBCR where? Where are they going to file the CBCR students? So they are going to file the CBCR in US. They are going to file the CBCR in US. Do you all agree to this one? Yes. All the report of more than 100 transaction students, all the report of more than 100 uh, all the report of more than 100, 100 countries, they are going to file in that particular country where they are having their headquarters based and that is definitely us 
Okay. So the question that will arise that then who will file CBCR in India? So obviously in India the CBCR will be filed by the Indian parent entity. Who is the Indian parent entity? Infosys, Wipro, Reliance. So these are the Indian parent companies. So they are the one who will be who will be filing the CBCR with the Indian tax authorities. Who will be filing the CBCR with the Indian tax authorities. Now if you see it very carefully over here, what we get. Whether the constituent entity in India being resident in India is also parent entity or ARE means alternate reporting entity. This is the parent, just only remember the parent, but ARE full form is alternate reporting entity. So whether the constituent entity in India being resident in India, so that is what it is. So whether Coca-Cola India Private Limited is also a resident in India? Students, tell me one thing. Coca-Cola India Private Limited. Coca-Cola India Private Limited is also a resident in India or not? A simple question. What is your take on this one? Quickly tell me and then we'll proceed. Coca-Cola India Private Limited, whether it is also resident or not. Amrito. And the answer is yes, it is. It is a domestic company. Because it is India Private Limited, students, always be very careful because it is India Private Limited, Saranya. Therefore, it is indeed a domestic company. It is a resident in India. And the domestic companies are always resident in India. Okay. What about Infosys? Again, resident. Okay. So, at least keep this in mind. Keep this particular point in mind, students. Both Coca-Cola India Private Limited as well as Infosys, both of them are resident in India. Is that clear to all of you? So let's coming back to this one. Whether constituent entity in India being resident in India is also a parent entity or ARE of the international group. So resident as well as is also parent. Now you tell me one thing. Is also parent. Is Coca-Cola India private limited? A parent entity, Coca-Cola India Private Limited, can that be considered to be a parent entity to that the answer is no. How about Infosys? Is a resident as well as a parent entity in India? And the answer is yes. Isn't it? So Coca-Cola India Private Limited, they are, although they are resident, but they are not parent entity. Infosys, they are both the resident they are both the resident as well as they are the parent entity also. So if you see over here, this they are talking about Infosys. Because Infosys is both, Infosys is both the resident as well as the parent entity. Whereas here they are talking about Coca-Cola India. Because they are not a parent entity. Because they are not a parent entity students. I hope that every one of you are clear. Amrita, Ujwal, Saranya. This is what it is. So if, let's finish it off the yes part. If the answer is yes, then the reporting would be under 286 subsection 2. The reporting students that would be done will be under section 286 subsection 2. And the report will be filed. Can you see that? The report will be filed under 3 CEAD and under which rule? Rule 10 DB. Under which rule? Rule 10 DB. The time limit students in this regard that will be required would be furnished within 12 months from the end of the said reporting accounting year. So say for example students, the previous year, the previous year in this context, I'll just write it above. <coughs> previous year is say 2021. So plus 12 months students if you do, it comes to 31st of March 2022. So up to 31st of March 2022, you need to file this particular CBCR report. Up to 31st of March 2022, you need to file the CBC report. Is that clear to all of your students? Fine. That is point number one. Now, going to the next particular point, students, which is, in this case, if the answer is no. If the answer is no. So, the no would be applicable to whom? To Coca-Cola India Private Limited. Which means that although they are resident in India, but they are not a parent entity in India. So, whether Coca-Cola India Private Limited will they be required to will they be required to file 
the CBCR, which means when we talk about from the Coca-Cola perspective, the CBCR would be 100 plus country. So whether they will be required to file the CBCR of those 100 plus country with the Indian tax authority, the general answer is no. But if there are the following defaults which has happened, if there are the following defaults which has happened then in that particular case it will be oblig it then in that particular case the coca cola india private limited will come under the obligation to file the cbcr with the indian tax authority if there is the following defaults so you people are asking sir which default it is so let's have a look in this context so the default students which we are talking about it is this where the parent entity is not obligated to file the report of the nature of 286.2 means in US, Coca-Cola USA is not required to file the CBCR. So if they are not required to file the CBCR, then Coca-Cola India Private Limited, you be ready to file the CBCR of all the 100 countries in with the Indian Tax Authority. The default, suddenly I'm taking you through this one so you be ready now to file the cbcr for all the 100 plus countries before the indian tax authorities that is point number a what about point number b students point number b in this case is that in this case point number b is that although the each defaults are independent to each other students each defaults are independent to each other so coming to point number B, what it says that although Coca-Cola India Private Limited, Coca-Cola India Private Limited is filing the CBCR in that foreign country. Although Coca-Cola, sorry, Coca-Cola USA is filing the CBCR with the US tax authority. But so far as India is concerned, USA does not have any tax exchange information agreement. USA does not have any tax exchange information agreement and because of this very reason that because USA does not have any tax exchange information agreement what we will say students what we will say we shall say in this regard that on account of non exchange of information agreement with the US tax authority the US tax authority will not share with the Indian government the CBCR which Coca-Cola has filed in USA the CBCR will never be exchanged with the Indian tax authority so if the CBCR will never be exchanged with the Indian tax authority then Coca-Cola India private limited you will be required to file Coca-Cola India private limited you will be required to file what the CBCR report with the Indian tax authorities the CBCR report with the Indian tax authorities and this is what the position shall be in this regard i hope that this point is well taken by all of you so with which india does not have the agreement for exchange of the report of the nature so this is default so because of these default now what happens if any one of the default occurs yes if any on the now you'll say so what about third one third one just forget it a and b just focus on that so if any one of the one default occurs then coca-cola India Private Limited, Coca-Cola India Private Limited, will they be required then to file the CBCR? Will they be required to file the CBCR? And the answer is yes. See the arrow, it is going here. And the answer is yes. But if such default hasn't existed, but if such default students hasn't existed, then what happens? If such default students hasn't existed in this regard, then you can see here in that the report will be filed here you can see from the cbcr will not be required then then in that particular case student the cbcr will not be required what will be required is only a limited report or an intimation that's it only a limited report or the intimation that's it what is required and that is like one page that's it and this the time limit has, it has to be filed within two months before the time limit to file the CBCR. So in the above case, in the above case students, <coughs> in the above case students, if you see, in the above case, the time limit to file the CBCR was 31st March 2022. So this two, the two months prior to this one will become 31st Jan 2022. 
this is it no cbcr if no default sir means i didn't got the question sir anya can you frame it properly this is all about this is all about students the cbcr provision now we move to the master file the next documentation in the process students is the master file now what is there in the master file students the documentation whereas in the case of cbcr there is a dual threshold sorry whereas in the case of the cbcr students there is a single monetary threshold of 6400 crores 6400 crores was the single monetary threshold in the cbcr when it comes to the master file students when it comes to the master file can you see that students in the case of the master file students 92d there is a dual monetary threshold sir anya you need to elaborate your question so that i can answer accordingly so here just a general comparison we have to do it quickly for all of you general comparison students if coca cola is default then only only does it need to file yeah yeah if supposingly the two the def first default is that the coca cola usa is not obligated to file the cbcr in us so if it is not obligated to file the cbcr in us then in that particular case indian coca cola in the coca cola india private limited will have to file the cbcr of all the 100 countries with the indian tax authority that is the first default the first default is that under the us law the coca cola usa may not be required to file the cbcr at all so if that happens then the coca cola india private limited will have to file the cbcr all the 100 plus cbcr with the indian tax authority that is a point <clears throat> and the second one is that if they don't exchange the information if they don't exchange the information if they don't exchange the the, the who does not exchange the information the us tax authorities does not exchange the information relating to the cbcr with the indian tax authority so if there is an absence of the exchange of information with the indian tax authority then in that case also then in that case also the in coca cola india private limited will be required to file all 100 plus cbcr with the indian tax authority now friends coming to this particular part <coughs> master file coming to this particular part friends master file see this master file students you have to be very careful all of you let's compare the cbcr and the master file in a general way let's compare the master file and the cbcr in the general way students this master file which i am talking about it is giving you the macro information like group policies global operations global allocation policies etc etc all the macro level information whereas a cbcr will give you the minutest of the information relating to the affairs of that particular company affairs of that particular company in that country in that country so the cbcr is more detailed whereas the master file is more having a macro view to its effect so therefore friends this macro view which is all about master file now please be very careful master file in this regard you need to ask this question and what is the question in fact this arrow should have gone from here this arrow students should have gone from here whether the consolidated group revenue exceed 500 crores so this is very lower amount isn't it whether the consolidated group revenue exceed 500 crores and if it exceed 500 crores then only you will have to take it further otherwise if the 
master file, the consolidated group revenue does not exceed 500 crore students, then as you can know that there is no further requirement to furnish master file. But if the consolidated group revenue is more than rupees 500 crores, then the second monetary threshold comes into play. Then the second monetary threshold that will come into play, which you need to satisfy and only then you will be obligated to maintain and file the master file. To maintain the master file. And what is the second monetary threshold? Students, in the second monetary threshold, they have given you two options. And one in one of the two options, you should fall into that particular scope. So you should fall in that scope in one of the two options and which are they? Let's have a look. So whether the aggregate value of the international transaction, be careful students, whether what? Whether the aggregate value students of the international transaction during the accounting year as per the books exceed rupees 50, lakh, 50 crores. Whether the aggregate value of the international transaction during the accounting year as per the books exceed rupees 50 crores. If you say the answer to be yes, that the aggregate value of international transaction during the accounting year exceed rupees 50 crores. So that's it. Master file you have to now file and maintain. And the second one students is whether the aggregate value of the international transaction in respect of purchase, sale, transfer, lease or tangible property in the accounting year exceed rupees 10 crores. <coughs> <coughs> One is exceeding rupees 50 crores and another is exceeding rupees 10 crores. Now, if it is one of the two, so the second one is about the intangible property. So, the second one is about what? Intangible property. So, the transaction relating to intangible property, they are talking about it for more than rupees 10 crores. Other than intangible property, students, they are talking about it for more than rupees 50 crores. If one of the two conditions are satisfied, along with that original condition, Along with the original condition, then as I told you, the master file students needs to be filed in this regard. The master file needs to be filed in this regard. I hope that this point is well taken by all of you students in this context. <coughs> so students, this is what it is and we are done with this particular proposition. Now in this regard students, the we have dealt with this particular part all throughout students thin capitalization i'll just quickly run through this thin capitalization okay before that students i can just go through the penalty part penalty and thin capitalization the last slide of transfer pricing okay immediately students my request to all of you would be if possible today or tonight itself kindly solve all the practical questions make it count these revision lectures you need to make it count directly jump into those practical questions and start looking into it you will finish it off your transfer pricing chapter quickly like anything that's the purpose of the revision lectures otherwise what is the purpose of the revision classes isn't it so always keep that particular point in mind now coming to this particular thing students because in any case tomorrow's class that you all have is at 9 30 in the morning 9 30 a.m isn't it so even though a bit of stretch you do it to finish it off the required requisite thing you can easily do that, isn't it? Now, so 271, <coughs> this 271 GB penalty, which is there, this 271 GB penalty students, which has been there, this particular penalty is for what? Is for the failure to produce the information and the documents. Is for failure to produce the information and the documents. Now, accordingly in this regard, students, accordingly in this regard, you can go below this one. And therefore, only one thing you just remember, students, only this. Other, if it would be too much for all of you, just remember only one. And what is that only one, this thing, remember this. Supposing, students, I do have not filed the CBCR. I have told you the due date of CBCR, isn't it? Which was 31st of March, 2022, in our example, for the previous year 2021 which we did 
the CBCR had to be filed by 31st March 2022, 12 months from the end of the financial year. Suppose English students, I question <coughs> in the examination that they will give it to you would be that the CBCR has been filed on 15th of May 2022. <coughs> the CBCR that they have filed is on 15th of May 2022. So if the CBCR students they have filed by 15th of May 2022, the question therefore is in this context. The question therefore is in this context up to default is for 45 days students all of you will agree the default is for 45 days in this regard since the default is for 45 days this is how the penalty would be calculated default up to a month the penalty would be 5000 rupees per day up to a month and in excess of the month it will be 15000 rupees per day for the period exceeding the month period exceeding the month in which case, how you are supposed to calculate? So, 5000 into 5000 into 30 days for April month, and then 15,000 students 15,000 into 15,000 into the 15 days. This would be the total amount of the penalty that will be applicable where the SSC files the CBCR, the SSC files the CBCR. For previous year 2021, for previous year 2021, on which date he has filed? 15th of May 2022. 15th of May 2022. I hope that all of you are clear with this one, students. And that exactly the things are. Why, students? So this is what it is in this context. Apart from that, students, <coughs> these are the general list of penalty students you have to go through this penalty also this is the general list of penalty students you all will have to go through to this one under reporting and all this is one thing like two percent penalty in which case two percent penalty students in which case so two percent penalty would be in the value of each international transaction or the specified domestic transaction students this is the case where the documentation information has not been disclosed correctly the documentation or the information has not been disclosed correctly that is point number one the second case students or not has been maintained <coughs> or not has been furnished second case is about when the transfer pricing officer has asked you certain information you have not file those information you are not filed those information third one is a flat penalty of one lakh rupee like all you know accountant report 92e accountant report 92e so that accountant report of 92e has not been filed so therefore that has imposed the penalty of rupees one lakh and finally you all are aware students this under reporting part 270a now please be careful when you do penalty of 270A, there is a provision of 270A, like what they are trying to say. That the difference between the ALP and the transfer price, students, the difference between the ALP and the transfer price in respect of that particular difference, in respect of that particular difference between the ALP and the transfer price, students, we all can say that clearly. What is that, students, we all can say in this regard? The difference between the ALP and the transfer price students, we all can say it very clearly that it's an under-reporting. It's an under-reporting. However, be careful students, be careful that there is provision of section 270A subsection 6, provision of section 270A subsection 6 as per which, what 270A subsection 6 says? 270A subsection 6 says this that students 270A subsection 6 says that says what it says this that if the SSC has maintained the documentation under section 92D if the SSC has maintained the documentation in respect of that international transaction under section 92D under section 92d 
then it will not be considered as an under reporting it will not be considered as an under reporting and therefore the ssc can save himself from the imposition of penalty because otherwise in respect of all the cases in respect of all the cases wherever there is wherever there is a difference that is the alp and the transfer price that difference which is added to your total income that addition would also be considered as under reporting and only one way to escape from the imposition of penalty under 270a is that in respect of that international transaction please do maintain please do maintain students the please do maintain in this particular context what please do maintain the the documentation which is required under section 92d if you do you will be eligible students this is what it is where the ssc has maintained the information <clears throat> so he will not be required there no penalty would be imposed with the with that one from the last particular point and then we are done thin capitalization it's a very simple concept every one of you are aware thin capitalization so always keep in mind friends in the case of thin capitalization two things in the case of thin capitalization always keep in mind friends two things that the indian a has take there are two cases of applicability there are two cases of applicability students of thin capitalization case number 1 the indian a has taken a loan directly from the non resident a the indian a students has taken a loan directly from the non resident a in that particular case students in that particular case when that indian a is paying the interest if that indian a students is paying the interest in excess of rupees 1 crore if that indian a is paying the interest expenditure of more than rupees 1 crore in that particular case students in that particular case what is that we are going to say then in that situation the fact that the indian a is paying the interest of more than rupees 1 crore then 94b provision will be made applicable how it will be made applicable that we'll see but just for the time being focus on the applicability point number 2 here in this case the the loan has not been taken directly from from that non resident a the indian a has not taken the loan directly from the non resident a but the loan has been taken from a third party the loan has been taken from a third party but this loan has been guaranteed by the non resident a then but this loan has been guaranteed by the non resident a so either this or this one of the two situation should arise but the common thing is this that that the interest that they are paying is for more than rupees 1 crore the interest that they are paying is for more than rupees 1 crore in that particular case students the interest which is paid in excess of rupees 1 crore then what happens we will look into 94b now students 94b says what that the deduction of interest expenditure the deduction of the interest expenditure that we are going to give would be subject to subject to what the 30% of ebita this is a finance term in earning before tax interest depreciation and amortization the earning before tax interest the earning before tax interest depreciation and amortization so therefore in this particular context students we shall say we shall say what that the deduction would be the lower of the two the deduction would be the lower of the two which means that the interest expenditure compare this with 30% of ebita lower of the two is what will be eligible for the purpose of deduction lower of the two is what will be eligible for the purpose of deduction i hope that every one of you are clear with this one okay now let's look upon through an example so let's say the expenditure is say 2 crores interest expenditure is for for 2 crores my ebita students the ebita which is there is say 10 crores so 30% or may i say not 10 crores i'll just reduce it say 5 crores my ebita students is say 5 crores so 30% of ebita will become how much 
1.5 of EBITDA will become how much truth? 1.5 so now 1.5 CR will be compared with 2 CR so obviously we will take deduction of 1.5 CR only but that 50 lakhs that has been discharged in the current year what will happen to this 50 lakhs this 50 lakh students will be added to the next year's next year's interest expenditure this 50 lakhs will be added to the next year interest expenditure so say the next year is also 2 crores interest expenditure next year is also 2 crores so the next year would be 2 and a half crores will be compared with the 30 percent of EBITDA of the next year 2 and a half crores will then be compared with 30 percent of EBITDA students of the next year is that clear to all of your students now all of you are clear with this one so the two and a half crores in the next year will be compared with the 30 percent of EBITDA of the next year and that exactly is the point fine <coughs> so there is one question which was being there now i think these questions they can at the most be interested only in asking mcq but hold on one point students mcqs are very dangerous these, these days students please be very careful carry forward for eight years Amruta, eight years after eight years still there are some excess which is left then that will get lapsed students this thin capitalization as a concept is not applicable in the case of if supposingly i'm a banking company and i have taken a loan from uh, the my non resident day okay so if my business is that of banking and insurance i may engage in the business of banking and insurance then in that case this taking up the advance and loan is my normal course of business and you are saying that one percent above and all the stuff nonsense it is completely a nonsense in this regard isn't it and that is the reason why students in such particular cases in such particular cases students we will say we will say what that for a banking company or an insurance company the provision of section 94b is not applicable i hope that every one of you have through with this with that students we are done with this particular thin capitalization now my suggestion would be methods of alp remaining questions and whatever else that we have done remaining questions students, you can just do it wrap it up it hardly will take you an hour or so okay so tomorrow when i will meet you students i'll be doing with all of you secondary adjustment some provision relating to assessment drp some provision relating to assessment drp students okay that should be all and then that range concepts and all that i'll try to finish it up very fast because as all as you also would know range concepts are very simple and then we will move to equalization maybe so i think one hour i'll give to truth tomorrow time will be only for two hours so i'm meeting you at 9 30 a.m to 11 30 a.m so i'm just letting you know at very advanced itself so the first one in our one hour we'll wrap up the franchise pricing okay and the last next one hour we will focus on equalization levy okay so equalization levy we'll get it sorted and that should cover up our transfer pricing and this thing and this way we'll be done with it okay so students please do like the video and share the video that is very mandatory for all of you and because of the fact this channel is now this is the channel henceforth that we are going to go with it so all of you are aware of it isn't it now quick announcement about our the Air academy program students the flagship program which i just would want to make an announcement in this regard students the ca iconic program is a flagship program in an academy we have got the plus we have got iconic and now we have also got light so primarily for every particular segment with a different theme we have the academy has got this particular um, they deliver they have got this offerings iconic is a premium offering but the price if you see and you can compare it relatively with the other market price which is there you will find us like still it's a premium product but the price is so affordable and easy on pocket and that exactly what this entire iconic program is all about flagship program for the cfr aspirants features if i have to just give it to you quickly live mentoring platform can you see that students in which one-on-one -on -one doubt solving evaluated test series printed books so here in iconic students books are being provided by the an academy 
Discord channel and all the remaining features as we all have it in the plus program also. Now this one, this evaluated test series which I just want to discuss, every paper that you will have in the group, like four papers in one group, or if you are taking both the groups, iconic program, then eight papers. For every particular paper, you will be giving up the you will be giving the test three test papers. First test paper will be at 40 marks, second will be at 80, and third will be 100 marks. Now, all of you can appreciate that how much the test in fact creates that or brings that the, the larger difference. And maybe in I can say more than 50% case, this kind of a test, the curated test, the evaluated test is what ultimately makes the ultimate difference. So this is the best part which has been there, which I think that uh, iconic program which has been there. Now the offering students, as you can see, 12 months, 24 months and 36 months, you do tell the, all your friends that whenever you take the subscription, be it iconic, be it your plus or light, do tell to all your friends and colleagues to use the referral code CADS, CADS, so that they can get an outright 10% discount. This is one of the important aspects students which has been there. So subscription is group wise, you can do it for group wise, 12 months, 24 months, 36 months is the period or the subscription for the iconic is also for the both the groups. Even that is possible students and that exactly what it is. Fine students. So see you then students tomorrow. Any further students doubt or query? Again students do like the video, subscribe to it, share it. That is what it is. Any query students? Before now we close this particular session right now. Amruta. Perfect. <coughs> so students tomorrow we will see at 9.30 am. Fine. Take care. Bye bye. Good night.